Welcome to the IDP Show. I'm your host, Josh Raymer, joined in the Soul Shack tonight. On my right, Adam Markham. On my left, Bobby Reynolds. Gentlemen, how are we this evening? Doing fantastic. Another great week of F-Ball. Another great week of F-Ball, Bobo. Your Rams gave the 49ers a fight. Uh, looking feisty through two weeks. I will say, I didn't watch as much football as I normally do today. Uh, shout out to my boy, Matty O, won Maple Hill. It's a big uh, disc golf uh, uh, playoff, kind of a last little thing to get into the USDGC. So, um, older guy, Matty O, 35 years old, but uh, showing the youngins how to play. There you go. You love that. But no, disc golf football is awesome. It. Puka Nakua, good gosh. What's uh, going on there? Is he him? Best start to a like rookie season of all time. Insane. Got a Jerry Rice comp on the broadcast. Yeah, it makes you wonder, is Cooper Cup any good at all? Or is, <laughs> is it just a role in that offense? Could so be. I'm about to tweet today, you saw. Yeah, the, uh, there was a, I think, Dynasty League football put out a poll. Dynasty, who would you rather have, Cooper Cup <laughs> or Puka Nakua? And I was like, ah, that's a, I know who has more value right now, and it's not Cooper Cup. Also, with the Puka Nakua stuff, stop sending screenshots on X about where you got him in drafts or how you acquired him that or whatever. The, Nobody yeah, cares. It's the annoying time of year. Where Nobody cares. because the guy has two good weeks. It's like, oh, look, I called it in May. There's multiple other picks in lots of drafts or in other auctions or whatever that were terrible before you got to Puka. So. Yeah. That's all Twitter is, is back patting. Sure. Yeah. This no is one's the been there year. before. Nope. Ever. Act like you've been there on X before. That's right. Stop it. <laughs> we don't like it. Uh, but yeah, it was a good, it was a good day of F ball. Colts got the first win of the Shane Steichen era. Anthony Richardson got to learn how to protect yourself. Young man uh -huh. exited last week with a, a knee injury and then exited this week with a concussion. So two for two, two for two, not looking good so far. I think he has to realize, yeah, you're a big boy. The NFL's filled with big boys, but Gardner Minshew's better than he looks average. Good. Yeah, he, he's fine. He looks all right. He's a very competent backup. If we, if Richardson's out next, next week, mm -hmm. I think. Minshew could hold down the fort just fine. That defense low key kind of fun too. It's 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 I think slightly above average. Yep. They've got some real difference makers. I think um, Zaire Franklin. I mean, yeah. You know, I don't think he showed up as much in the stat sheet today, but he was still good. God, he's he he's great. Tackles, I believe. DeForest 100%. Buckner gets a, a sack on the final play of the game, so it's like we've got some dudes showing up. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll talk all about it. This is the week two recap. Welcome in. Uh, we're going to be going through every game. That has happened Thursday through Sunday. We're watching the Sunday night football game right now between the Dolphins and Patriots. Another stinker. Yeah, 17-3 Dolphins right now, about midway through the third. No Jalen Phillips. No Jalen Phillips. We uh, we victory lapped too hard week one, and uh, he had to humble us by sitting out this week. <sighs> yeah, he picked up a back injury Friday night, so uh, Friday in practice. So. I feel like that's how I get my back injuries is picking things up. <laughs> Friday night, went out in the town. Yeah, exactly. Went to a bar. Sure. Uh, did a little Crashed too much. his car, Roquan style. <laughs> Old Roquan Smith in the car with the cocaine and the prostitutes. Oh, wow. But uh, so we're going to go through everything Thursday Night Football will do at the end. We're going to jump in with the Sunday games here. And then uh, it's a double header. Monday night, boys. Um, Hell yeah. Hashtag I was like blessed. I was like so happy to see that. That's my favorite when they do that. I thought they usually did it week one. Right. They kind of went away from it, but came back to it now for week two. Yeah. I guess they didn't want to do it this uh, past Monday with like the 9-11 game mm. and uh, yeah. New York uh, Jets being in there. So I think they just wanted to give that the solo spotlight. But week two, doubleheader on Monday night? Yes, please. So also, you, you that, won't you won't hear about the Browns, Steelers, or the Panthers and Saints. A lot Those of good IDP games. goodness in yeah, that one. Yeah, two good games tomorrow. The Rodgers stuff was pretty awful. Yeah. I was kind oh of I was kind of hyped for him. You know, just kind of a new setting, something different. Um, and the way the that he came Jets. in with the flag on 9-11 yeah. was, like, pretty pretty hype. It's sad that that's the highlight of his entire yeah. Jets campaign, year one. Yeah, it was such a bummer. I'm also not buying the whole, like, you know, are already tracking his Achilles, like, progress. Yeah. Uh, coming back in January. For the guy who was uh, immunized as opposed to, um, uh, you know, getting the, the vaccine, <laughs> I'm not – I don't want to hear anything out of Aaron Rodgers' mouth about medicine. Somebody no, said thank that you. his don't uh, need Achilles surgery was done in the Complete dark. darkness. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is some innovative new technique. Uh, I mean, I'm, no. Cam Akers did it. Yeah. 
He, well, he's also not 39. Yeah, good. He's <laughs> also a healthy scratch today, too. Yeah, exactly. How's that working <laughs> out for it's him? true. And if they made it, like, it, it basically would put him back right at the Super Bowl. Can you imagine Zach Wilson somehow yeah. gets that team to the Super Bowl? Like, Zach, you're out. They ain't getting there. Yeah. No, it's like, let's stop. We don't have to talk about this, guys. Yeah. Hey, we don't yeah. have to do it. Miami, how much do y'all like Mike White? Is there any chance we could maybe send him back up here to uh, Seriously, to the run Jets. New York? That's actually not a bad idea. I think, I'm sure they've picked up the phone on that one. I do think a Rodge is... Uh, uh, doctor was the same one that did Kobe. So, dude, also Kobe tore his Achilles and then came in and hit two free throws for yeah. him. Went out, so built different, dude. One well, of the and best. then he and Rogers walked around. I mean, he was just yeah. very mm-hmm. cash about the whole thing. I um, think he knew. I think uh, he knew. You know, yeah. yeah. It's like, um, I think if I think if that happened to me, I don't think you'd ever see me again. I think I would just live in. I think I'd be just bedridden for the rest of my natural born life it's gonna be interesting to see what an achilles injury uh recovery looks like on a 38 year old quarterback y'all think he plays again next season i don't know i think it's probably yeah, think so. more than likely but i put it at like 60 40 man nah, there's I, no way he goes out like that. rogers the, has a lot of interest outside football what was the deal he signed how many years he just did he reworked his deal he said he planned to be there for like two or three seasons and then hand the keys back to zach wilson he's coming back yeah, I, I think he is. I, I do the believe. He's back to Zach Wilson. Yeah, it's like the Jets were like, no, brother. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> Zach will be gone yeah. long before you do that. You don't even so need keys anymore, Josh. Let's talk about the Sunday games, and uh, let's kick things off with Bears versus Buccaneers. And uh, we're going to start on the losing side with the Chicago Bears. This team may be a hot mess on offense. The sky might be falling with Justin Fields, but on the defensive side, a lot of the guys that we've come to expect production from showed out for the Chicago Bears. So kicking things off at the top, it's the pair of linebackers, Tremaine Edmonds, 16 points, TJ Edwards, 11.5 points. And uh, also notable in here, Rigatoni Sewell, uh, <laughs> Panay Sewell's brother, nicknamed by John Rigatoni Sewell. I believe it's uh, Noah Sewell. Yep. Is that right? Yes, sir. The actual name of this guy, uh-huh. uh, 8.75 points. Um, and then Jalen Johnson cracked the top five as well. So if this is your first time tuning in, we're going to talk through the top five guys and uh, just anything notable that we want to discuss. So uh, 16 points from Tremaine. He had 15 and a half in week one, uh, 11.5 for TJ Edwards. So, I mean, seems like uh, I don't think the linebackers, uh, we have a whole lot of concerns there, fellas. Um, Seems like it's about what we expected. Nice, solid production from both of these guys yeah i mean tremaine uh like we've kind of discussed i think he's probably going to have his best year fantasy wise that we've ever seen i mean i don't remember him ever getting over 15 tackles in a game at buffalo yeah eight Mm -hmm. solos eight assists for tremaine edmonds so i think you're going to see a lot more performances like that just just you know stuff in the stat sheet racking up the tackles um and then yeah edwards once again 12 tackles himself so these guys are you know on underdog and stuff when on all these talk and tackle props, um, easy candidates for the over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, this team sucks. The offense sucks. The defense is going to be out there a ton. Uh, that's been the case for these first two weeks. So, I mean, they're going to rack up tackles all year long. Yeah. TJ Edwards, 12 total tackles, five solo, seven assists, Bobo, 34 pass attempts for Baker Mayfield and then 34 rushes for the Tampa Bay offense. So Adam's right. This team's bad. Defense is going to play a lot. And uh, T.J. Edwards, I think, was the LB1 there last week. I think this is just going to happen from time to time. You're just going to see um, one week to the next. Edwards will have more tackles. Tremaine will have more tackles. Um, the more notable part for me, I guess, was that Brisker wasn't really in the top uh, top scores for he, this week. He did get banged up. Did he? Okay. I don't, I don't know if um, – I saw it was cramps at one point, but I don't know if, it, if he ever returned the game. Okay. So, something to monitor. Also, Eddie Jackson got banged up, I'm, I'm fairly certain. So, I mean, a lot of... And Kyler Gordon's on IR. Yeah, we right. should mention that as well. So, I mean, the injuries this year to start have seemed really high. Yep. Like, Off- it's been a ton. Offensively as well, it seems that yeah, way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he looks like he returned to the game. He had 8.25 points. So, okay. Remind- not a bad week. Reminds me of, like, the COVID times. Yeah. 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 We're yeah. just constant. A lot of hamstrings. A lot of yeah. It's just right the now. start of the year. The guy, you know, that's true. That this is this is the flip side of not going as hard in training camp, which I'm all for because we want to get guys to the regular season. But yeah. 
The flip side of that is you're going to have a lot of pulled hamstrings, you know, just a lot of like soft tissue injuries because guys aren't used to going full speed an entire game. Something interesting here. Not a single sack uh, recorded by the Bears defense. Not a surprise. That's kind of what we thought. Yeah. I, I think there was one last week by Yannick. So now through two weeks, we have uh, one sack in two games. That's not great. Yeah. And 20, that's how they spent their money. And 28 tackles between the two linebackers. There you Woo! Go. So there you go. Let's talk about the Buccaneers, though. A um, sleeper that I think some folks were on. Uh, Joe Tryon Shoyinka had a nice game, uh, 29.1 points. He had four solos, two sacks, two TFLs, three QB hits. But his partner in crime, Shaq Barrett, also got in on the action uh, with 25.9 points, two solos, one sack, one PD, a QB hit, one pick, and a touchdown. So, um, yeah, thank you. Justin Fields for throwing a pick six to Shaq Barrett. Now, it was like right up against the goal line, so it wasn't like it was a 90-yard touchdown return, which would have been sick. Still, though. But good to see Shaq Barrett out there making plays. Yeah, I and mean, we've, we've touched on that last week, and we're going to touch on it every single week whenever you have your edge guys or even your interior defensive linemen going against that Chicago Bears O-line and Justin Fields. You have to start them. I mean, everyone went off this week. Joe Tryon had 29 points. Shaq had 26 points. Vita Vea, who we're going to get to, he had 21 points. So, Justin Fields, la last year he uh, was tied for um, being sacked the most among quarterbacks. So, I mean, I, I don't think that's going to stop. Six today. Six today. Six A ton sacks. last week. Oh, my God. That's becoming a cheat code. So They stink. He stinks. What do you think? Yeah, shout out Nico. I think he's kind of realizing that. He's got Fields. Is he going back to the Browns? He's got Fields in XFL <laughs> and might be time. And DJ Moore, right? Yep. Which it worked out today. But, I mean, yeah, that's just not a combo a bad I team. don't think you want. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, Vita Vea, 21 points, two solos, one assist, one and a half sack, one TFL, three QB hits. This Christian Isian guy mm -hmm. uh, got himself um, – 16.65 points after 14.65 points week one. Uh, two solos, one assist, one TFL, a PD, and an INT. I think we got to put this guy on the radar. I mean, above, you know, right around 15 points on average. Just yeah. something to pay attention to. And then some guy named Cam Gill even got a sack. So you know it's bad for Justin Fields and the Bears when even Cam Gill is getting a sack and a QB hit. I like the radar. Josh. Don't forget about Gill. It's good. Note. Yeah, don't forget about Gill. We got old a, Gill. We got a drop for one of those guys over there, maybe for a radar for something on the radar. <laughs> Is that good enough? That's the only one I know because it's green. It's like a stink cloud. Carlton Davis was out today. Was he? Yeah. Antoine Winfield uh, was a little bit of a downer after a big week one. Actually, Ryan Neal had a pretty solid game. If yeah, I remember let me, right. Let me pull up these uh, Buccaneers the, here. The uh, the linebackers were disappointing. They uh, were. Levante they David were. had two tackles. Devin White had two tackles. Yeah, Ryan Neal had a nice little game. Okay, so uh, Winfield was solid. Uh, Ryan Neal had 11.5 points, and then uh, Winfield had 11.25 points. The safeties were fine. But again, to reiterate, the Bears linebackers offense, were bad. Justin Fields, 16 for 29 for 160 yards. The rushing uh, – Trio, whatever you want to call them. Actually, no, that guy's not even playing. Khalil Herbert and Ro Roshan Johnson, 16 carries, 67 yards. Not great, Bob. So, I mean, maybe be on the lookout for that. If you've got an IDP that's going up against um, the Bears' offense, I don't know. Be weary that it's just going to be this type of a game. Yeah. It's just kind of gross. Now, if you've got a if you got a lineman going up against yeah. them, fire oh, yeah. them up. Linebackers, not as much. Seven and a half points for Devin White and Levante David, two points. Yeah, yeah. tough. That'll so, probably be their worst games of the year. Truly. Mm -hmm. So, if you got some managers in your league who uh, are disappointed about Levante or Devin White, send out some trade offers uh, because, you know, it, you never know what kind of deal you could get done coming off a bad performance. Is it Fields or is it the system? It's probably both. Both, yeah. So, cool. uh, we'll see if they clean house. That 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 Everything I heard this offseason was, we're going to do everything we can to surround Justin Fields with talent and see if he's the guy. And if he's not the guy, we'll draft someone. It's... And, and, I mean, the talent still isn't that great. Yeah, it's yeah. still a really bad team. O-line sucks. Chase Claypool and Darnell Mooney or whatever. Claypool's. Commit. He was getting roasted last week. Yeah, yeah. here oh, we yeah. go. This is for you. Not great, Bob. Not great, Bob. He's uh, falling back after he got pushed. He Let's talk about Packers versus Falcons. This was a fun game. I love that, Josh. Thank you. This, was, uh, this came down to the end. It was a weird kind of um, fourth down uh, attempt where it looked like they got the Packers for illegal formation. They reviewed it. And turns out the it was not illegal or it was illegal formation, but the receiver dropped the ball. 
So the Falcons declined the penalty, accepted the play, which they originally ruled a catch. But when they went under the hood to review it, they said, oh, wait, no, this guy actually dropped it. So uh, just a tough loss for the Packers. Good win for the Falcons. The uh, Packers IDPs, they had some guys show up. Quay Walker, boys, has been balling 22.75 points. He had 26.2 points week one. Probably your leading scorer at the linebacker position through two weeks. What we've been talking about lately. What's your boy boy been saying? What's your boy been saying? Your boy been saying that I think people may start looking at Quay Walker as a top three dynasty linebacker. We already had him as like five. Yeah. He's already been up there for us. But, I mean, I think... You put up back-to-back 20-point games. 20, this is your yeah. second yeah. season. Yep. I mean. Pretty impressive. Playing 100% of snaps, I believe, Bobo. Shout out our favorite uh, fantasy analyst, best friend, favorite Canadian. Absolutely. Um, favorite bacon hater, John Macri. It's hard to tack on that last one. Quay Walker, 100% of snaps. Devondre Campbell, 83% yeah. of snaps. It's very obvious at this point, Quay is the LB1, and then Devondre is like a <laughs> – Borderline part-time LB2. And uh, Macri noted that. We saw that last week prior to Walker getting hurt, and now this confirms it. Yep. So, so he is the guy. Um, we should mention great too. 17 tackles, 8 solos, 9 assists, 1 PD, 1 QB hit. Razul Douglas uh, got himself a pick. 4 solos, 2 passes defended. He has been awesome through 2 weeks. 18.8 points this week. For 16 last, points last week. For the last 3 years. Truly. Man. Underrated. Mm-hmm. Very underrated. Devondre Campbell uh, cracked the top five as well. 14 points. He had seven and a quarter week one, seven solos, seven assists. So uh, what is that? Like 31 tackles between the Packers linebackers. Kenny Clark, 11.6 points after 12 points week one. So he's been a nice, solid defensive tackle option for you. And think about those linebackers getting all those tackles. What does the Falcons, what do they do? They just pound the rock with yep. Algier and Bijan. So, I mean, yes, your linebackers and I think your safeties, those box safeties are going to be great plays against uh, Against Atlanta. the Falcons. Yeah. yeah. Let me give you this, too, because we've got a little bit of knowledge now. Going back to week one, Quay Walker's PFF ranks. 91.7 in coverage and 92.1 overall defensive grade. Um, Quay Walker, dear goodness, Adam might be right. Might be on to something there. Top three. I mean, who you want now? You want Devin White or you want Quay Walker? Quay Walker. Yep. For sure. All I'm right, sure. so what about um, Foyer or Quay Walker? Foyer is going to be 28 next year. Quay Walker is 23. Um, Man. Well, right now, probably still Foyer, but Quay's – Really coming close. up quick. He's yeah. coming up quick in the rear view. And, you know, Devondre, he's he's going to be there next year, right, contract-wise, I think. I think so, yeah. But, I mean, once he's gone, hey. me Quay. Quay over uh, Foyer. What about Quay over Roquan? Let's just go right Devin, to the top. Devin Lloyd played really well today, I will say. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm just saying, there's Devondre's fine, but Quay is, he's ascending. Yeah. Uh, okay, what about this one? Uh, Nick Bolton. We'll get to it. <laughs> I think it's um, it's just Pagnolo scares me. Yeah, we'll get to it. I don't want to jump too far ahead here, but not a you not can a, leave. Yeah, not a great day for the Chiefs <laughs> linebackers. Um, let's jump to the Falcons though. Caden Ellis, uh, what was your flag plan? I think it was uh, four sacks. Uh, yeah, four sacks before week eight. Get some, some shackles. Four sacks. Yes, hey, sir. four sacks. We got through. one of four. We got one. One so of four. Eighteen point six points for Mister Ellis with uh, Troy Anderson out this week. Hey. Um, Tro- mm. Could you not get one more? Come yeah. On. Assisted Killing. tackle. What was his? What was his line? Six and a half. Seven. I think. Six Seven. and a half was the line. Okay. He got to six. There and I go. think they were all solos. It I moved to seven. It was. It, it was moved six, to seven. It was six solos, one sack, well, one TFL, and a QB hit. You got in early though. Yes. I did some. I did some today. That, was the uh, only thing. Was Anyways, continue on. Yeah, and that's really the only IDP of note that performed Gosh, really well here for us. Troy yeah. Anderson out. I thought that was a smash. Yeah, me too. Yeah, Nate Landman. Yeah, I just love that Landman. He's not Waterman or Airman. He is Landman. Mm-hmm. Uh, replacement for Troy Anderson, seven point five points. Uh, AJ Terrell, 11.75. Yeah. David go. Onyemata, 9.5. Um, so, not a lot to report on the Atlanta side of things, boys. I say we move on to Seahawks versus Lions. Addy, who is this Trey Brown character? I think he's going to end up being the second leading scorer on the week, 43.5 points. This dude was all over the field against the Lions. Yeah, no idea. Four solos, one sack, one TFL, two PDs, one QB hit, one INT, one touchdown. 
So Trey Brown, Trey whoever Brown. you are, <laughs> shout out! <laughs> great job, dude. Yes, really Hell nice. Of a game. Let's talk about the next guy on the list, though, because this mm-hmm. is a name we actually recognize. Julian Love, eighteen point one points. He had fourteen point two five points week one. Um, Ten solos, three assists, one fumble recovery. And one of my flag plants was that Julian Love was going to repeat as a top twelve safety. He's off to a really good start. Mm-hmm. I mean, I he's, so. he's being used. Um, Ideally, there for IDP, so you love to see it. <laughs> love to see it. Eddie. So good. That's so good. You're uh, such a profesh. Jermont Jones, twelve point two, one solo, one assist, one sack, one TFL, one QB hit. Uh, so that was nice seeing him get his first sack there with the Seahawks. Yuchenna Nuosu, eleven point five points. He had nine point two five points in Week One. He had two solos, a TFL, and a QB hit. And then this was the big story for me. Jordan Brooks, the snaps. Just the, the fact that he outproduced. Uh, now, it wasn't by much. I think BWAGS was at like 11 points, but technically, Brooks did outscore him with 11.25 points. Yeah, 11.25 points. He had 14 and a half week one. Do we know the snaps on Brooks? Yeah, Six so solos, five assists. 100% on Wagner, 86% on Jordan Brooks. Wow. Damn. Okay. I mean, that's awesome. Welcome back, Jordan Brooks. Shout out Jordan Brooks. That's uh, looking like our probably our biggest miss. Just because, I mean, the man think defied it was gonna... modern medicine. And that's fine. I'll miss on those guys yes, every single happily, time. Happily. Because, like, and I think we said that. Like, we're happy to miss on Jordan Brooks when he got cleared from PUP. We're like, v- happy for the guy. Hope he comes back. Don't want anything to do yeah. with him. The PFF grade last week for Jordan Brooks, 55. So, eh, middle of the hey, road. Hey, but still. producing, though, man. Sure. Producing. Sure. Producing still got that that uh, first round draft capital. Going to get a, a second contract it's somewhere. It's good for his dynasty value. The disappointing yeah. part of Seattle for me is Uchenna Nuasu. He's starting yeah. slow. You know, I know we're looking at a TFL and a QB hit here, but no sacks through two weeks and really not a ton of tackles to, um, either. So we had actually, I think Adam brought it up at some point in the offseason, is, you know, we could probably see a little regression from Uchenna this year. He, he was, was just so good last hyper year. Hyper-efficient last year. He was great. And, I mean, it, when you look at his build, like, Uchenna's not one of these guys that's just physically overpowering. Yeah. He can just, like, he he wins with his motor. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, um, yeah, I mean, he's, it's, it's tough to really rack up the sacks, you know, with someone like that. So I, I could see him taking a little bit of a step back. He's still going to be fine, but more of like a, you know, an edge two for you. Yeah. I don't think he's going to repeat it. What was he, like edge seven? Seven, I think. I feel like Seattle's kind of got hit in the mouth the first two weeks, too. I feel like maybe they were taking a lap a little, you know, and thinking that they were just going to dominate this year. Got hit in the mouth week one by uh, Los Angeles, and then – Say what you want to about the Lions, but they're a tough, they're a tough matchup. That's a good right team. Now. That's a good, that was a good game. That's Absolutely. a good team. Also, Jameer Gibbs now with uh, Dave Montgomery, I think went out of the game. Yeah, something with his leg. Man, Twisted I want to see a full plate yes, of uh, Jameer Gibbs carries. About to. Yep. Yeah, and then the uh, shout out whatever the Seahawks player was that had the blue ski mask on in the uh, locker room, mm-hmm. making fun of Chauncey Gardner Johnson, asking Lions fans to wear the blue ski mask. I don't know if you guys saw this, mm-hmm. but maybe that was Trey Brown. It could have been. I mean, the man needed to uh, celebrate. Like we said, probably going to end up, I think there's a guy from the Cowboys game that outscored him. But, hey, shout out Trey Brown. Did y'all see the Chauncey Gardner-Johnson um, penalty? No. What was it? It, where he, it was like uh, Ken, uh, he tackled Kenny Walker. It was like a, a loss for 10. It was a great play. But then, like, as soon as Walker got up, he pushed him down again. <laughs> oh, my God. And they got flagged, and they got, they got, like, on the goal Come line. on, like, bro. Come on, dude. You can't be doing that, C.D. Deuce. You know oh, better man. than that. Let's talk about the Lions side of things. Again, not really a whole lot of notable uh, IDPs here. Alex Anzalone continues to be the LB that you want, uh, which is – that makes me want to puke just saying that. Um, 19.45 Shout points. Out. Hit that over today. <laughs> Did he? Yeah, yeah, he was part of the five. I, I was going to say, tell us about the five-leg parlay. I hit a pick five. We're going to start – we're going to lean into some of the underdog tackle props, I think. Yes, sir. We've been having – we've been discussing it in the in the group DMs and stuff, and it's just a lot of fun and something that makes a lot of sense for us to probably talk about on the show. Mm-hmm. But uh, let's see. This week, this ticket was – okay, Five picks. I put up. Uh, I think it was a ten dollar ticket. So I uh, got two hundred bucks here, baby. Let's go. Julian Love. His um, his tackle line was five and a half. He had what thirteen. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alex Anzalone. He was at six and a half. He had seven. Patrick Queen was at six. He had eight. Uh, let's see. Uh, Aziz Alshier was at six and a half. He had eight. 
And then Robert's playing, baby. Mm. Big Bob went nuts. Six and a half. He had 14 and a sack. Let's wow. go. So, yeah, that stuff is awesome. The, I, it's I, fun. I, I love the underdog stuff. And, uh, I mean, it's been nice so far. We'll, they'll get sharper, obviously, as mm, they yes. figure stuff out. They, but, they uh, don't know the IDP side of things like they have the offense dialed in. Yeah. And I'm sure there's some sharps out there who are cashing in. Yep. But it is really hard to uh, to hit those five-leg parlays. Mm-hmm. That's like um, – it's tough. I've never won one. I've done quite a few. Probably done fifteen or twenty. Not not IDP. Like IDP, I feel like they just rolled out this season, really. And they have about like I'd say between thirty to forty tackle props every week. They do. Start checking them out about Thursday. You'll see yep. some early ones on on Thursday. They have some sack ones too, but yep. I feel like the tackle ones are just better better mm-hmm. bets. The sack ones are weird players a lot of times. Too. Yeah, like just rando guys. Yeah. But hey, Aiden Hutchinson was one of them this week. I did have one. I had one yeah. on the Thursday night game that got busted because I was like, oh, Nicholas Morrow, no, I'm going to take the under. I think he hit the over on his tackles in like the first half. So busted that all to hell. I had Hassan Reddick on the Thursday night yes, game. Yes, I had him sack. as well. Didn't get one. Didn't get one. So Thank thanks, Hassan. Puka was an easy one today. I think it was four receptions. Oh, my yeah. God, really? <laughs> <That'll> <laughs> did be, they see this guy week one? That'll be 12 next week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. Easily. So the rest of the team, uh, Kirby Joseph, 12.25. It was a bunch of the DBs uh, after Alex Anzalone. So um, obviously, uh, you know, high-volume passing attack there. But Kirby Joseph, C.J. C. Gardner-Johnson, Jerry Jacobs, Cam Sutton round out the top five for the Lions. Let's go ahead and move to Chargers-Titans and talk about the Chargers side of things. And uh, the guy that we like to make fun of because he was already banged up and questionable for week two comes through in a big way for us. Joey Bosa, 26.6 points, leading point score for the Chargers. Three solos, one assist, two sacks, two TFLs, two QB hits. But even more surprising, on the at the number two spot, <laughs> filling in with Eric Kendricks out, one of the grossest linebackers. Talk about Alex Anzalone being gross. Kenneth Murray in Eric Kendricks' stead. 23.6 points, five solos, five assists, one sack, two TFLs, and a QB hit. Babo, mm. if you started Kenneth Murray, God bless you. You were rewarded with 23.6 points. That week one PFF grade for Kenneth Murray, 29.4. Was it really? Yeah. I'd be so curious to see what this one was. But, I mean, he had to because you got Eric Kendricks banged up. You've got Dayon Henley not healthy. Um and you've got to put a linebacker out there against the now Tajay Spears and Derrick Henry-led Tennessee Titans. Um, yeah, Kenneth Murray is just kind of stinky but startable right now. And Make just some plays. Enjoy yep. it while you can. Stop Derrick Henry on a few of those mm-hmm. uh, goal line runs. But, yeah, had the big sack. But that's, that's IDP. I mean, a guy goes down and you can just plug in his backup and he can potentially ball out for it. You know, yeah. we do this all the time. Yeah. It's it is a risk. It's a ma- I mean, you're only doing that in situations where like you're in trouble at linebacker. Yeah. And you're starting mm-hmm. like four or five of them, right? Because you can have Nate Landman, who's who's fine. Like mm-hmm. he was fine, but sometimes it does pop off for a Kenneth Murray type of performance. Like I, st- for example, in when one league where I had a lot of injuries and stuff, I started uh, Jack Gibbons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I probably could have. Pick- I think Murray's probably available. I'd say mm-hmm. so. You know, I easily should have probably pivoted to. Uh, Someone that was going to get more sacks. I think Gibbons only got like seventy percent last week, but still, I was just like, I don't know what Kenneth Murray's role going to be. You know, being Kenneth a scared little boy, afraid to win, and that's what happens. Was the moment too big for you? I think so. Did Gibbons got your like, leg a little bit. Gibbons got like six points. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. You got five tackles. Let's Gibbons. talk about though. Uh, I guess it was just a good game for uh, the Chargers edge rushers mm-hmm. because Tuli. Tuo Peloti, got it. Tuo Pelotu, uh, edge rusher, seventeen point three five points, three solos, four assists, one sack, one TFL, one QB hit. Morgan Fox, defensive tackle, solo, a sack, a TFL, two QB hits, and then Derwin James, our safety one, eleven point seven five points, eighteen and a half last week, seven solos, four assists, five sacks on uh, Ryan Tannehill on the week. There you go. So is Tannehill another great player to target if you've got a defensive line matchup against him? Yeah, that O-line sucks. I mean, yeah, that's uh, I think so. Um, Target the Titans and target the Bears mm -hmm. if you have edge rushers going against them. Mm -hmm. Nice to see that from Thule. Yeah. Yeah. The rookie. I mean, seven tackles, a sack, a TFL, QB hit. That's very nice. Very good game. I'm I'm interested to see what the snaps will be like for him. But They need some help because somebody's name that we're not mentioning tonight. Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack. Yep. He got close. Saw a little bit of that game, but yeah, I thought he this would have been a big matchup for him to to do something. Decent game, five tackles, one PD, but yeah, nothing off the edge. Yeah, 
Titans wise, we like to see Jeffrey Simmons, defensive tackle, 17.65 points, 18.55 points week one. He had five total tackles, two solos, three assists, one sack, one TFL, two QB hits. He may be D tackle one through the start of the season. You read my freaking mind. I think there are some times where you look at Jeffrey Simmons play ball and you're like, man, this guy is every bit of Quentin Williams. He is. You know, um, age wise, I know he's probably a little bit older than Quentin, but. Based off of talent, I mean... Smacking their primes. Exactly. You know, same type of uh, career arc as a guy like Quentin Williams. Just I, got paid. Similar bank accounts. Yeah, yeah very, sure. Very sure. well paid. The Brinks truck has visited both of their houses at this point. It's amazing how interior pressure in the NFL... Um, Man, it causes such problems on the other side of the ball. You know, for that offense, you've got a guy like Jeffrey Simmons coming up the middle, um, and then a guy like Joey Bosa off the edge. It just makes makes life difficult. Yes, it does. Makes it hard. Twenty six point two years old is Jeffrey Simmons. Quinn Williams is twenty five point eight. Yeah, so very close in age as well. Did y'all um, do what, 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 where are y'all at with that? You know, Dynasty Jeffrey Simmons, Quinn and Williams. They're one and two. Flip a coin. Yeah, one and two, really man. Do. Yeah, I don't care. One and both. Yep. I'm happy to have them. Public perception. I'll take which one you don't want. Public yeah. perception is probably going to say like Q. Yeah, and they're probably going to say like you know Simmons is on the Titans. I don't think we, he's probably getting a lot of national love. Yeah, hard that, knock, they had hard knocks too with yep. Q. I'm saying if you have to do a trade, like you could probably get like Jeffrey Simmons plus for Quinn and Williams. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe so. Absolutely. Maybe give somebody some thrown in. Something Pick up nice. a third, what's that, what's maybe that plus. Yeah, third. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see why not, because straight up, Quinnen's probably worth a first. I think least. I would take that and send that if I was on either side of that equation. I agree. I agree. So, Trey Avery and Sean Murphy Bunting balled out for the Titans as well. 16.75 points for Sean Murphy Bunting, 16.5 for Trey Avery. But let's talk about the edge rushers. 14.45 points for Danico Autry. He had 25.3 points week one. So, he has been super duper solid to start the year. Three solos, one sack, one TFL, one QB hit. Harold Landry, it was good to see him back as well. 13.55 points, one solo, two assists, one sack, one TFL, one QB hit. So uh, we, I want to see the snap counts for both these guys because I kind of wonder, is Harold Landry getting a large volume? Are they still working this guy back in? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, I think it's I think it's fine. I, I remember looking at it last week and I was like, oh, yeah, he's, he's back. He's totally back to what he awesome. was. So but, I think he's fine. But, yeah, Danico Autry, man, he's been – just a revelation. He yep. continues just to get the job done, mm-hmm. and uh, someone that I mean, I think you can feel okay starting. 100%. Oh, absolutely. He got thirty-seven snaps last week and had an eighty-nine point four PFF grade. So, if I'm a little uh, questionable at that DN two spot, I have no problems plugging in Danico Autry if I've got him in like a similar group of guys. Love that. Yep. Let's talk Ravens Bengals boys, and uh, got to give a shout out to the young king. He mentioned the Easter Island head emoji, Geno Stone. Safety replacement for Marcus Williams went off for Baltimore, 23.85 points, seven solos, two assists, a PD, and an INT. And then Jadevion Clowney, 21.1 points, three solos, one assist, one sack, one TFL, one PD, and two QB hits. So Clowney came to play against the Bengals. Shout out Johnny the Greek. He mentioned on the week to preview with John Macri that our Darius Washington was worth paying attention to in CB required leagues, 11.25 points, 20.8 points in week one, three solos, two assists, a PD and a QB hit Patrick queen clocking in there at 10.5 points, five solos, three assists, one QB hit and Ronald Darby rounds out the top five. So are we going to have to once again, pay attention to Geno stone Addy? I don't think so. I mean, maybe, it's weird, right? Because I'm it's, not. it's like um, the dude had moments last season, but um, I, I mean, Kyle Hamilton again, another quiet week, another stinker, another stinker. So your number one safety, I uh, know, uh, number three safety. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Sorry, Brisker was in a little cushion. Was, okay. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's just a <laughs> second year player still. Um, you know, We're stepping fighting. into a new role. I will. I will. I do want to see. Uh, I do want to see the align the turd, uh, the alignment for these guys because I do wonder is Geno Stone that true free safety like Marcus Williams was, or is this going to eat into Kyle Hamilton's sweet spot usage? Um, they may, they, and both of them may be playing deep, you know, both, both of them may be playing too high. I don't know. I mean, because I know Kyle, Kyle Hamilton played a lot of free safety last week. Yep. But yeah, we'll we'll definitely be digging into the uh, alignment of those guys, but. I don't know. I'm just not really interested in those safeties. Yeah. It's not been good to start the season. I don't think Geno Stone is going to be consistent at all. I mean, yeah. if he's out there. I mean, I, 
I mean, he got a pick, you know. He did the the nine tackles was surprising because uh yeah, he doesn't really he's not usually a, a big tackle yeah, guy. Yeah, notice the name we didn't mention. Roquan Smith had mm-hmm. what 30 points last week, not even five in the tackles. top 5. Yep. So, also, Baltimore only had one sack, so Clowney sack was the only one that they had. No sacks for David Ojabo, no sacks for Odafe Owe. Owe only recorded one QB hit. That's all that dude did. So that Bengals team is in trouble. Yeah, did you see hear too. about uh, Burrow reaggravating. Yeah, yeah, the calf injury, which kind I of, think that's kind of why he's been looking. As I don't think he's yeah. himself right now. Yeah. I think he rushed back to be ready for Week One. I don't think he's right. I think he probably felt a little bit of um, yeah. You remember obligation? That, remember that quote from Jamar Chase yes. in the come back week five? Yeah, like we don't we don't need you back. Just, so I mean, right there should have told you he probably knew it was pretty was serious. Yeah, I think he was probably trying to you know tell his guy like, look, we don't you don't have to come back if you're not right. And they're owing to anyway. Yep. So while we're on calves and stuff, it's also like people doing with Cooper Cup right now. It's like week five he'll be back. It's like man, you re-aggravate a hamstring injury. That can be like a full season type of thing. Exactly. That yeah, thing can linger and, forever. Especially hammies. Keenan was last me. year. Yep. yep. Um, maybe we talked about that last episode. But, yeah, don't just start pinning some of these guys in just because that's when the time frame for them to be healed is. Yeah, that's a little – just a little gives me the willies anytime we're talking about – especially hammies because those can just be re-aggravated so easily. Mm-hmm. But we talked about Kyle Hamilton, Geno Stone. Let's talk about a safety on the Bengals side who has been balling – out to start the season. Dax Hill, 16.75 points, leads the Bengals and scores 25 points in week one. He had nine solos, two assists, one PD. Mom's meatloaf, there he is at number two, Logan Wilson, 14 points. He had 12 points in week one, so he's right there in that 13 points per game range that they talked about. Seven solos, three assists, one TFL, but right on his heels, Addy, Jermaine Pratt, 10.25 points. Seven solos, two assists, and then Mike Hilton and Nick Scott round out the top five. So, any surprises for y'all? Hill, uh, y'all here. Dax Hill uh, is is playing really well. I know we talked about the Cincinnati safeties were not really super interested, but so far so good for Dax Hill, Bobo. Shout out to my wife. Uh, I love you very much. She burnt the absolute mess out of some meatballs this week. <laughs> some meatballs or some meatloaf? Some meatballs oh, that no. go with the spaghetti. And, uh, you know, being the loving husband that I am, I smothered them in marinara, went outside and sat and uh, ate my dinner. You know, it was a nice Kentucky night, just eating out back on the patio and uh, just thinking about orange, just thinking about old mom's meatloaf, Logan yes, Wilson, how... Even those those meatballs were so burnt, but the marinara covering them made it about a seven out of ten meal by the time it was all said and done. Is so this just a long winded metaphor for this Logan is Wilson? A long winded metaphor for Aaron. I understand you. Please take care of that noggin. And yes, um, Aaron, get well soon, buddy. And uh, Logan Wilson, I, I I understand this now more than ever. Yeah. Jermaine Pratt, though, Addy, another <laughs> solid week uh, after a fantastic week one, ten and a quarter points for your boy. That's what he does. Yep. Just slept on forever. Slept on forever. They brought him back for a reason. Yep. Dax uh, Hill, I was curious of the uh, the usage um, from last week. He had two snaps on the defensive line, 14 in the box, 41 at free safety, and 12 in the slot. So, I mean, nice to see him rack up these tackles with, uh, I'm assuming he probably played you know similar usage this week. Hey, something else. Uh, no sacks for the Bengals. So, I, know, I, I was going to say that too. Yeah, Sam Hubbard, Trey Henderson, both off to really slow starts. Yep. Mm-hmm. This is what happens every year. I feel like there's some defensive line where we're like, "Oh, is it time to panic on player X?" And it's like, yeah, it works out. Just this, you got to ride the wave, guys. This is how IDP goes, especially with defensive linemen. You're not gonna have. They're not like linebackers where you're gonna get ten points every single week. That's just not how this goes. I was thinking about that today, Josh. At what point do you start panicking? What week? You don't have to panic, but I think it's fine to like sit guys down that are big names if they don't have a good matchup or they're not performing well. If you got like a Danico Autry, how long? And you're we... like Sam Hubbard or Danico Autry? I yeah. mean, that's a real question. How long are we giving these guys? Usually like week four. four. Weeks. I week usually four. wait about a month to let yeah. things even out. Gotcha. It's but, still early, but you know, I mean, there and there's situations where, like, think last year, Logan Wilson started off super slow, but yeah. then tore it up down the stretch. Yeah. Matthew Judon the opposite. You know, tore it up early, simmered off. Down the stretch. So, I mean, that's just how this stuff goes. Okay. It all does. Look at Van Ginkle with every, the sack. Every uh, long-haired guy has had a great week so far in week two. <laughs> that long hair works. It's like I'm telling uh, you, boys. Super powers. Yeah, we'll talk about Gardner. Yeah, man. The juice. Uh, juice was flowing there. Uh, so, Raiders. AVG with a great 
Say average my ass, Rush, Adam. Man. How about that? He's had a nice game. They were talking about him earlier with you know Phillips being out. He's he's played a lot of edge snaps and he's done really well. Yeah, mm-hmm. there you go. Raiders Bills. Let's talk about uh, another unsexy name, Big Bob Robert Spillane. Twenty five points. He had ten and a quarter week one. Nine solos, five assists, one sack, one TFL, one QB hit. But his running mate, Divine Diablo, these guys were close last week, close again this week, 21.2 points for Diablo, 16 and a quarter, week one, six solos, four assists, one sack, one TFL, one QB hit. Raiders LBs be feasting, Addy. Yeah, I mean, um, unfortunately, they are terrible, though, in real life. Oh, of course. <laughs> That's the thing. You got to remember, like, all these, um, like, think of, like, with the, everyone's kind of hyped about Terrell Bernard last week uh, when they played the Jets, but... The Jets freaking ran all over them. Yep. So you got to keep that stuff in mind. Like, if a team's getting ran on like that, uh, those linebackers may not be sticking around there very long. Milano is obviously safe, but that LB2, like we know, there's a lot of competition around around that LB2 spot. So you just got to, you know, keep that stuff in mind. Um, but, yeah, this this uh, Raiders team, what was I talking about here? What, the you, linebackers. Yeah. Just, Rob, how, Rob, just how well they started off. Robert Spillane is... I think right now maybe the best value pick at linebacker. Exactly. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, because this was a guy that I don't know what the ADP was, but I feel like it was probably in like the 40s to 50s. I would say probably 50s. I'm going to look it up while you talk. But, I mean, this was someone that was basically on waivers, you know, if in all your redraft leagues. I, I picked him up in an RSO league as my linebacker four. And, uh, yeah, dude, I mean, I, I'm, I'm loving it. Mm-hmm. And he seems like – I think he's getting like 100% of the snaps. Like he I think is. he's he is the snap leader, which is just awesome. I think he has the green dot. We talked about this in preseason. Kind of were worried about, you know, he's, he's like, he had never done it before. Exactly. Is is he actually going to be able to handle this once the season starts and turns out? Yes. And he is. I mean, he's going to be fine. I mean, that defense is not going to be that good. And but... it's like I would worry about that, but who are they going to pivot to? Yeah. It's Di- it's Diablo and Spillane. That's it. I mean, who else is even there? Yeah. I don't know that I could name another Raiders line. Is Jayon Brown still there? No. That yeah. team's bad. They know bad that they're going to be bad. Uh, he was LB55. Wow. So there you go. And let's see where Diablo. Diablo is a, still a nice deal, but LB34. But, yeah, you'd much rather have Splane at so, that I mean, cost. If, if, if Splane continues this same role, what's he going to finish? Oh, boy. Top He's going to finish top 12. I mean, you're looking at uh, what is that average out to? So he had 25 and 10. So 30, like seven, 16, 17 points. Yeah, that's a top twelve line. I mean, yeah, if he's that's anywhere, yeah, if he's if he's anywhere north of fifteen points, he's top eight probably. Now, now I bet this game will be vastly different. But in week one, Spillane with a seventy one PFF grade and Diablo with an eighty four PFF grade. So this game was much worse. That will probably adjust accordingly. But um, yeah, they did get ran all over as well. This may be one of like the best uh, off season NFL acquisitions for IDP too. You know, yeah. Spillane going there. You know, we wanted to talk about a lot of the bigger names, the Tremaines and the TJ Edwards and stuff moving. But low key for for IDP, this may be this may be like twenty twenty one Denzel Perryman for yes. us. Yes. One thing I'm noticing, like with most of these free agent moves, they all seem to translate almost yeah, mm-hmm. immediately. Like yep. everyone that got. A nice little deal. Kate and Ellis. All of them. Yep. Uh, Bobby O'Karake. Yep. Um, Tremaine Edmonds, TJ Edwards. Literally it was all an of them. obvious one, but Bobby Wagner going back to Seattle. Sure. Julian Love. I mean, every single one of these signings have, have been fruitful for Did you say IDP. linebacker? Or did you say? Shit, whatever. Okay. Who cares? Yeah. All of them. They've all been good. I mean. It's true. More often than not, you know, it's just something that, I mean, you you might want to think about that. So what does this mean? What does that mean? Well, I think you what it means is you look at who is going to be a free agent in 2024, and you try yep. and you try and rank them, you know, accordingly. We got a lot, and you try and go buy these. Get guys. get out ahead of you it. Get ahead of them, and, and you, yep. you you understand their their contracts when they're when they're coming up, and yeah, when they're eventually going to change teams, get bigger roles, like, like Patrick Queen. We mentioned he's going to be a free agent, probably on a Will, new team. Willie Gay, same yep. thing. Like uh, Jordan Brooks. You start looking now. You start looking to who's a who's going to be a twenty twenty four free agent, and that's where you kind of start to. You know, and, send out some offers. And look at Get some of those Murray. non-sexy Jeez, guys. Weird. Like, look at the – because those would be the top-end guys, I would say. I would yeah. say, like, yeah. Queen, Willie Gay, and um, – who was the other guy we just mentioned? Jordan Brooks will be probably three of the guys, if they don't re-sign with their teams, They'll in the lot. mix to be, be the highest-paid LB. So, like, who are some of those mid-ra- mid-range guys you could go get for, like, a I don't know, a fourth or a fifth? Yeah. You know? 
Uh, so it's a great point, Addy. We should mention the Raiders, though. The DBs balled out as well. Nate Hobbs continues to make the case for being CB1 on the season. 21 points week one, 11 and a quarter this week. Marcus Epps and Trayvon Merrig were also very good. Uh, 10 points for Epps, 9.75 for Merrig. Let's go to the Bills side of things. We mentioned Terrell Bernard. There he is, top of the list this week for the Bills. 16 points, 10 and 10.25 in week one. He had six solos, three assists, a PD, and an INT. And then Matt Milano got in on that. Uh, interception action as well, 14.8 points. He had 23.8 last week. This week he had three solos, one assist, one PD, and an INT. And then after that it kind of fell off a little bit. Gregory Russo, 10.25. Ed Oliver, eight and a quarter. And Dane Jackson, 6.5. Did Josh Jacobs get hurt? I'm not sure. I don't know. I just don't think he was very effective. He was nine rushes for negative two yards. That yeah. sounds uh, not ideal. So and they got down. That might explain a little bit of the Bills' lack of production, the IDP from the linebackers. Uh, Garoppolo only had 24 attempts, only completed 16, and there was 15 rushes for 55 yards. So there was zero yeah. offense. Not sustaining drives. No, not at all. That's what you need. Yep. Who yeah. are we talking about that in terms? Or, oh, the Bears. Kind of similar situation. They play. Bears, the Jets now. I noticed yep. that with the Cowboys because mm -hmm. I had the drawn curse uh, over. Uh, and then, yeah, just those offenses that just don't move the ball well or they're not going to sustain drives. Mm -hmm. uh, just I think you want to avoid those those you know, those IDPs when you can. You might get a tackle early on in the downs, and then the quarterback's just trying to throw a completion, two incompletions at a punt. Bad TV. Just bad, bad game scripts. I mean, yeah, you yep. just want to. Who's the worst team in the NFL right now? Hmm. A lot of the teams that we thought were going to be really bad have actually looked really competitive. Yeah. The Cardinals have been scrappy. The Rams have been scrappy. Thought it was going to be the Rams or Cards. Yeah, Adam. Um, John, Adam. Uh, both Jet, of y'all been up my crawl. <laughs> <Boston Rams. Jet. laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to go look and see. Um, I mean, been... probably like the Jets. Maybe the yeah. Jets. The Jets seem pretty bad. Zach Wilson's terrible. Just yeah, let Brees Hall like, run it, man. But get... Arizona's still really bad. Yeah. And also Washington. The Bears. The Bears are the obvious the Bears. choice. The Bears. Yeah, but Washington, too, with Sam Howell, like, he, I don't think he's very they, good. They won an OT, though. They did, but it's the Cardinals. Yeah. Houston's. Well, no, it was uh, the Broncos. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, it's the Broncos. Houston's yeah, pretty bad. So, same. <laughs> <laughs> are the Broncos 0-2? Because they lost today. Did they, they lose did. last week? They did. Did you see the final play? Uh, the Hell Mary? Yeah. That well, rushed I, through? Yeah, I, was not, I turned it off because I was like, I don't, I don't really want to cool. watch Broncos. It was insane, Commanders. Dude. Yeah. And then he, and it was an awful two point conversion. Attempt. Well, I don't know. I thought the, I thought there should have been a little PI called. Yeah, probably so. It but it was, rough. it was still like a bad throw. It was a bad throw. <laughs> yeah. What Off about balance? So the Texans are the worst team in the NFL. Y'all are forgetting them. The Texans. The Texans. Are really bad. Yeah, the Texans are bad. I, I yeah, agree. They're pretty bad. Offensively, we'll, they're pretty rough. We'll talk about them in just a. It's sec. like a mix of like six or seven teams. Right? Yeah. yeah. After a couple more weeks, we'll know more. We'll know more. Any give any given week, somebody can be the worst. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> this week it was the Bears. Sure. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Chiefs Jags. Uh, Chiefs side, Legereus Sneed. There he is. Twenty-two point two five points, eleven points in week one. He had six solos, one assist, a TFL, two PDs, and a fumble recovery. Chris Jones, welcome back. Twenty-one point one points, one solo, one assist. 1.5 sacks, one TFL, one PD, two QB hits. And then this was fun for me because uh, I had a decent exposure to this guy in best ball, George Karloftis, 18.9 points, 13.75 in week one. He had a solo, three assists, 1.5 sacks, uh, one TFL, two QB hits. And then Felix and a DK Uzama as well, Bobo, mm -hmm. 8.6 points, 6.5 last week, a solo, an assist, half a sack. Nick Bolton bringing up the rear of the top five, 8.5 points, 7.25 points in week one, five solos, three assists, but the most disturbing thing, just 80% of snaps. What the hell is going on with Nick Bolton, Bobo? I will say he did miss practice, I think, Thursday or Friday. I don't know if it was an illness. I think it was Ernest Jones that was actually sick. I think this one was maybe like a – personal reasons or whatever it was. So maybe that plays into it. That's my only excuse. Um, it also could have been a matchup thing. You know, I will be interested to go back and watch. I didn't watch much of this game, but to see the Legereus need go back to the um, slot. Yes. Um, Cause McDuffie really didn't do a whole lot yep. this game. This game, it was Legereus need. 
Um, is this a game where they just wanted to run more linebackers and give Bolton a break? I don't know. It was a lot of Drew Tranquil. Drew Cr- Tranquil had a really good game from an IDP perspective. Um, man, Bolton's going to be frustrating, I'm, af- what I'm afraid. Is, what is your concern level, like 1 to 10 right now? It's it's uh, it's it's more than it should be. It's 3. 3 out of 10. I'm at about a 5. Okay. I'm mildly worried just, just because... A three. That just sounds like someone that's got a lot of Bolton. <laughs> yeah, it's not I do have not one to face the reality. I, it could be injury related or illness related. Maybe he wasn't a hundred percent this week, but just with the track record and the guys in the building there, with uh, you know Tranquil and Willie Gay and Leo Chanel, I mean Spagnola could just be like, well, mm. we could rotate these guys and keep them fresh. It's, I mean, that's the NFL. It's what you want to do. I mean, this team's clearly going to be playing late into the season. I mean, it's like the running backs. You don't really see bell cows anymore. You see a bunch of these guys, Tajay Spears, eating into Derrick Henry's carries all of a sudden. The only bell cow running back right now in the NFL seems like it's Christian McCaffrey. Um, I don't know. Teams evolve, and the Chiefs know what window they're in. They know as long as they have 15 out there throwing the ball around, they're going to have an opportunity. Let's keep our guys fresh, and let's let's play for later on the season. So, I don't know. Maybe just chalk it up to that. I mean, is Bolton a sell right now? Probably, honestly, because 80% is not great. 58% 58% for Willie Gay, 42% for Tranquil. Ch- uh, Chanel played 36%. I think you probably have to hold Bolton because you'd be selling at a huge loss right now. People might not know this, though. People might not know that it's 80% usage here for Nick Bolton. They might just see a big name, and, and it might be, you know, not you, the week to sell. You know what I'm asking here. What are you going to sell for? You're not. I don't think someone, you're getting a second right someone, now. Yeah, so someone, someone the, gives you a second. You selling con- for a second now? Here's yes, concerning, absolutely. Here's the concerning thing is that Nick Bolton is exactly like we're talking about going into the offseason. He's a free agent next next year. So if the Chiefs don't pay him, he's happy to walk out the door and go somewhere else. So Oh, he would be a massive. So he is expiring? Yes. I'm going to double check I'm that. I'm pretty sure he, him and Willie Gay both are um, because the Chiefs haven't really up to I know, I know Willie Gay is. Uh, I believe he's under contract through uh, 2024. He is a UFA okay. in 2025. So he's got one more year. He's in line for an extension next offseason. I don't know. What would I sell Nick Bolton for right now? Now, Bolton will have it kind of open up for him, though. Trank was on a one-year deal. Obviously, Willie Gay is going to be leaving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it could be Bolton and Leo Chanel. That's what I'm saying. I'm just, I'm just holding. I'm not going to sell because you're most going to get a third. I don't think you're getting a second for Bolton right now. But if someone gives you a second, you will. You will oh, absolutely. someone's giving yes. you a second for Nick Bolton. I think someone's giving you someone's a second. Someone's definitely giving you a second. Yes. I don't know that I'm taking a second for Nick Bolton. You think back to last year and Jack Campbell was like a middle of the second. Would you rather have Bolton or Jack Campbell? I'd rather have Jack Campbell. Because then that turns into I can go scoop up uh, whoever the next linebacker that pops yeah. off on the waiver wire That's is the thing. to replace sure. 75, 80% of Bolton's That's the thing. We talk top about, end production. We talk about what these topping guys are worth all the time, but we can go get these Spillanes and these Pearmans and these Quincy Williams. Now, they're not going to have the shelf EJ life, speeds. but from one, within one season, there are tons of guys that we can pull off the shelf. And we see them coming. Yep. We do it every single year. We 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 call these guys out every single year. You're right. Absolutely. You are 100% right. So, I, so when you get... When you get a when the market opens up for you and you get people starting to come offer you stuff, I mean, I think you really do have to. But I think a lot of people don't do it from your perspective and see the second as like a trading piece. A lot of people see it as, well, I've got my second now for the draft the following year. Yeah, hell no. You don't need to think. You need to think like I can use this to buy something else. Yep. Makes sense. Yep. You're not going to just like, oh, this is I'm going to. Earmark this guy with the younger talent. Yeah, you can go buy. It's a store of value that only increases yeah. in value as we get closer to the draft. It's just an asset that more people like. Yep. What, everyone loves a second. What's it's, the lowest snap percentage that you could see it get to for Bolton? I don't think he's going to play less than like 70% of the snaps. Yeah, no, I think 80 is. I think 80 is floor. reasonable floor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I, it drops below that, I'm getting concerned. Unless he's injured or like not 100%. Yeah. I, I think he's actually a, a decent little buy right now. I would hold. I'm not oh, selling. That, I think you're selling Say at a again. loss. Decent little buy. I mean, I, I think that, I mean, this is two of his, I think maybe his worst games back-to-back that we've seen. Now, mm-hmm. he's a good buy in Dynasty, right? Because redraft, I, I think, mean. I mean, if, yeah, unless you got to give like a, I just feel like most people are going to still want like a okay. second at least. His and, outlook is murky for me because mm-hmm. like there's just – so many guys there. And we didn't know if it would affect Bolton, but it has. Oh, yeah. Uh, Quay Walker or Nick Bolton? Quay Walker. Yeah. 
I think it's probably Clay. Right. So take this for what it's worth. Uh, Kenzie Webb Sport on uh, Twitter. She is a sideline reporter or an aspiring sideline reporter for the Chiefs. But she did report and has a bunch of likes on this. So whatever. Nick Bolton made five solo tackles and three assists. He was injured earlier in the game, but came back off, um, came back out on the field, and everything was okay. So interesting. Maybe that had something to do with it. Interesting, interesting. We'll track his injury status because if he was that banged up, that part. makes me feel yeah. better. Yeah. Let's talk about the Jags, though. And you mentioned it earlier, Bobo. Devin Lloyd had a nice little game, nice little bounce back. Hey, he, he hit the over on underdog. There we go. Eighteen point seven five points after five point seven five in week one. He had five solos, six assists, two PDs, uh, and then. From there on out, it was all the secondary that was eaten for the Jags. Rayshon Jenkins had 17 points. Darius Williams had 16.75 points. Andre Sisco had 16 points. And Trey Herndon had 15.25 points. So if you started any DB pretty much against the Kansas City Chiefs, you were feeling good. Um, yeah, Foye Aluakun not cracking the top five. I don't know how much we're going to see that this season. That was pretty surprising. What was uh, the stat line? I'll pull it up. But uh, – yeah, I mean, it was the secondary was feasting. Devin Lloyd, though, what do we think, boys? Nice little bounce back for him week two. Sounds like a nice little cell window. Nice little cell. <laughs> Sounds like a good chance to offload him to whoever who's, whoever's <laughs> horny for uh, Devin Lloyd. Right. Yeah, let me pull Devin up Lloyd here. or Nick Bolton, who you want. <laughs> so, Foyer was fine. He had 13.5 points. Even let us he was yeah, just he was off the podium. What was that, like 10 tackles? Yeah, let's see what his uh, tackle total was. 10 tackles, one fumble recovery. Lloyd's week one, 58.7 PFF grade, but an 80.0 uh, tackle grade. So, yeah, I don't know. TBD with Lloyd. I'm a hold for Lloyd right now. I don't know. I'm kind of hot for him. Same thing. It's like um, no, one, no one's giving you a second. We're still early to start Yep, start selling. If someone gives see. you a second, though, you're done. You're, you'll, you'll cash out. For Lloyd? Yeah. He loves Devin Lloyd. You love these guys for her. Why you love? Why do you love people? <laughs> Man, I love Devin Lloyd. You need to get that love out of your heart. I don't know. I, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna pray about that. I hate all these guys. Yeah, all these guys suck. <laughs> I hate them. Yeah. Um, I want to see the snap counts for Devin Lloyd. Do we have that yet? I don't know if we have. Um, I'll look up Macri. Yeah, message Macri because typically he's. I ain't messaging Macri. Message Macri and ask what Devin Lloyd's snap count was. Let's talk Colts Texans. Forgot to put him in the doc, so I want to read it here from Sleeper. And uh, Addy, who was the linebacker that you screenshotted picking up? I think it was in XFFL. That was yeah. Colts linebacker EJ Speed, Josh. Yeah, he had a need for speed this week. Yes, sir. The leading <laughs> score from this game, 21.4 points. Uh, he had six total tackles and a sack. So great game for speed. I mentioned Buckner got the end of the game sack. He had 18.9 points. Quiddy Pay, another nice week from him. He's looking very solid to start the season. 17.8 last week, 18.85. He had five tackles, a sack, and a fumble recovery. And then Zaire Franklin, we mentioned it as well. Um, 25.75 points week one, 16.75 points this week. So he came in number four for the Colts. And then number five, Samson Ebucam. He had 5.5 in week one and 15.3 this week. I told Two total tackles and a sack. I told you you were going to like him. Yeah, he's a good player, man. He's fun to have around. Make plays. And then as far as the Texans are concerned, uh, MJ Stewart was actually the leading scorer. I believe he was uh, probably the replacement for Jalen Petre. Uh, 14.5 points there for Houston, but they had a very, very quiet day for IDP. The next highest score was Denzel Perryman, 8.5 points, eight total tackles. So not a lot happening for the Houston Texans. Mm -hmm. So Perryman played 100% of the snaps. Henry, 2020, 2020, played 81% of the snaps. Christian Harris, 39%. Is Christian Harris, is it is it rip already for Christian Harris? Done. He, he done. Blast him he out done. the airlock, he as done. Johnny likes to say. And that's what we've uh, been cautious about all offseason with him. Everyone was all hype about this dude, seeing stars. <laughs> it took D'Amico Ryan's two games, not even two games, but like get Christian Harris the yeah. hell off the field. Christian Harris week one, 46 total snaps and a 43 PFF grade. Yeah, it's almost like those PFF grades yeah. do maybe matter a little bit. <laughs> so, so th and keep in mind, D'Amico Ryan's did not draft Christian Harris. He brought in 
uh, Denzel Perryman and drafted Henry 20202020. So he went from we should uh, keep adding to it as as he starts playing well. He went from 46 total snaps in week 1 to 22 total snaps. So yep. wow, within one week. Guys, he got benched. Like there it's very go. clear uh, this is not a good turn of events for Christian Harris. Now let's bounce back to the Colts linebackers. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Zaire Franklin, 100% of the snaps. Shaq Leonard, 71% of the snaps. That's down. I think he had like 87. 86. 86, yep. 86 week one. Uh, EJ Speed taking up 54% of the snaps. So why did I put out that tweet? Like, I, I think it's a good time to pick up EJ Speed. Well, for one, we see this all the time. Just backups, you know. EJ Speed is a better linebacker than Shaq Leonard. He right really now. is. What are, watched, his, what are his grades? Ninety four point eight in Week One. Yes, he was the highest graded linebacker. I think Week One. Yeah, I think so. Close to it. Top three, wasn't he? Woo, baby! Every time this dude gets a chance mm-hmm. or gets out there in place, he just racks up stats. Really good tackle efficiency, and always just makes plays. And that's what he did again yep. today. Twenty one points on fifty four percent of the snaps. Yep. Right. What was what seven tackles? Six Seven, tackles and a sack. Six tackles and a sack on 54% of the snaps. Yep. I mean, this that, dude is going to re- supplant Shaq Leonard as the LB2. And when he does, that's that's your that's your league winning type linebacker yep. right there. Absolutely. On his biggest snap percentage um, in 2022, um, he saw 41 snaps in week 18, eight tackles, one forced fumble. So, playmaker. You talked sp- about it. And if you're following along, I mean, the reason why I tweeted that out, it was what, Friday? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, too late now. Now you're going to have competition. Now you're going to have us on this show talking about EJ Speed and his, it's, it, his waiver. Be, his fab budget, his fab bid just went up probably 50, 100 percent. There's more people out there that are yep. curious about him. So yep. I mean, that's why you got to get in front of this stuff early. Everyone's good at this shit now. Everyone yep. has. Everyone's everyone's tuned in. Everyone tracking knows the snaps, tracking right. the grades. You got to get ahead of these things. Yep, EJ Speed. Uh, like Addy mentioned, could be a league winner because I think he was in the LB like 70 range maybe by yeah. ADP. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's I, I'm frustrated I didn't get more of him because I, I, we have never – we haven't believed in Shaq Leonard for a while. I wrote about speed. Never. Never, ever. I pulled Since speed, he went to Shaq. I pulled speed out of your ranks um, in June and wrote about him. In the two games which he played more than 30 snaps in 2022, he scored 18.4 and 16 points in big three scoring. Yep. Um, so Adam's exactly right. When given the opportunity, EJ Speed is productive. Um, and we got the we got that wrong. I think it was last week. I tweeted about it. Shaq Leonard will most likely be cut next off season because his dead cap is finally uh, smaller than his actual cap hit. And Zaire Franklin and EJ Speed are under contract for next year. So I think it will be Zaire Franklin, EJ Speed as soon as this year. I think you could see that change be made. And then next year, I would expect that to continue as well. Shaq didn't do anything today either, did he? Nope. Mm-mm. EJ Speed was three. LB70 in our last ADP update this offseason. Wow. Three solo tackles for Shaq. And, I mean, we touched on that as well. Like, even the way Shaq produces now, it's mm-hmm. not it's not how it was. Yep. It's, he's just getting tackles pretty this, much. This is another team here to always start linemen uh, over is the uh, Houston Texans yep. gave up six sacks. Six sacks. Um, today. So they, Rookie they, QBs. They, yep. And four of their offensive linemen were out. Wow. Four of their projected starters. So that that will change. That offensive line is actually pretty decent. So just pay attention to the practice reports for those offensive linemen because they were getting roasted this week against the Colts. Um, Shout out Evan Ronda a little bit, too, for kind of calling Julian Blackman um, in the last couple months. He, he kind of been on Julian Blackman, shifting around a little bit. He had heard in camp, and Blackman's been great so far through yeah. two weeks. 11 points this week. So, um, yeah, I wanted to mention here um, EJ Speed is the league-winning type, especially if he gets more and more work. Zaire Franklin, boys, may end up the season as a top five linebacker. Yeah. yeah. He just he looks like a different type of dude out there, man. Bet the overs on all his tackle props. Yep. I mean, that dude is just a machine. 17 tackles week one, 13 tackles this week, 30 tackles, 15 per game average. EJ Speed, uh, dis- discount uh, Jermaine Pratt. Yeah. There you go. Similar situation. Let's move to not the— Not for long. Yeah, not Whoa. for long. He is he is catching up here. Uh, Bobo, let's move to the late games mm-hmm. and talk about your Rammies going up against the 49ers. Okay. And we're going to kick things off with uh, Fred Warner, a player that is near and dear to our heart from the beginnings of uh, the Big 3 IDP podcast back when Fred's dad followed us and then quickly unfollowed us. Uh-huh. But uh-huh. we remember Fred's smart, dad, smart Fred Sr., uh, 27.75 points, 
Fred had 15.5 in week one. He had nine solos, one assist, one sack, one PD, one QB hit. Another nice little performance, though, was Diamador Lenore, Mm -hmm. cornerback, 22.85 points, 11 and a half in week one. He had a solo, assist, a PD, an INT. Best name in the league. That's uh, it's Divine Diablo's up there as well. Two oh, I, I just like saying two oh two oh two oh two oh. Yeah, uh, but, but no, Di- I think Diamador Lenore. That's about as fun as it gets. That's fun. That sounds like a funk singer from like the seventies or something like Motown. I don't know. Up sauce next Gardner. on the stage, Diamador Lenore. Love gardening. Love sauce. Max it's Crosby. True. Let's not forget uh, one of our original it's, name babies. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, and then uh, Dre Greenlaw. Nice week for Dre. Michael Sixteen Heck. point five points. Seven solos, five assists, one PD. Isaiah Oliver got him a pick, 16.3 points. And then Charverius Ward continues to be an outstanding option in CB-required leagues, 15.5 points after 14.15 in week one. So great to see Dre Greenlaw and Fred Warner here in the top five. Uh, No Nick Bosa. But a uh, you know, couple of uh, cornerback options there, Diamador, Lenore, Isaiah Oliver. Um, 49ers are a good team. Yeah, really good team. Bosa's just going to need some time to Yeah, work his way going. back into uh, – I'll look up and see what his um, – what his day looked like. Looked like he had 11 points after four points week one. So he had a TFL, two tackles. Don't panic on Nick Bosa. Don't don't drop Nick Bosa. Don't don't bench Nick Bosa. <laughs> Trade him to me if you will. Yeah, please, God, if you if you want to and you're in a league with us, we will happily take Nick Bosa off your hands. I had someone reach out, want to do a trade, uh, getting rid of Joey Bosa. Mm. And I was like, don't do it. Just don't. Mm. I know you're frustrated, but just please don't. And it was uh, they're wanting to get Ivan Pace. That Ivan Pace, and I was like, "Woo, wee boy!" Ivan Pace has arrived because he, he's he's loaded at defensive end, so he's wanting to give up like Bosa straight up for Ivan Pace. No, I was like, no, no, no. I was like, that may work out. That I was like, that actually may work out for year one, but mm-hmm. it's like Ivan Pace. Just everyone, be careful. This we've mm-hmm. seen that we just saw this happen with Sanborn. Yep, it could easily happen Gosh. with Ivan Pace. We're on the same wavelength. That's exactly. I mean, this is a great time to sell mm-hmm. Ivan undrafted because Sanborn was undrafted as well, right? Yes. So maybe he makes it through, but I feel like odds are he's not going to. Yeah. It's fun now. It's it's a lot of fun. It's and a great story. And then in story. the offseason when they draft a linebacker. I think you famously yeah. said about Sandboard, cash the hell out. Yeah. So if you can cash the hell out on Ivan Pace right now, maybe do not it. now. But it's it's sounding like maybe now. I mean, when he's wanting to float, you know, he was like it was like also you can like get Joey Bosa. For it was Ivan Joey Pace. Bosa, and he was also oh like yeah yeah yeah. Josh Sweat plus a fourth was another one he was thinking for Ivan Pace. <laughs> oh, I, was like, yes. I was like, dude, if those I are, wouldn't do that. Yeah, don't do that. I understand because you have this depth, but still depth at edge is wonderful. That's what you want because yeah. you can go find the Ivan Paces and the Henry two o two o's and the EJ Speeds and the Big Bob Spillanes and the Cody Farton Starton Bartons off of your waivers. Mm-hmm. I yep. mean, just load up at edge, like cherish those guys. Yeah, uh, give yourself options there, and then and, and go then look at Joey Bosa this week. Yeah, you know now he'll be hurt next week. You know back or <laughs> leg or whatever, but, but then he'll then he'll week four he'll be back and get you twenty five points. This is how it goes with Joey Bosa. But I won't let you talk about the Rams because a very exciting young player is at the top of the heap for them this week. Sure, Byron Young, edge for the Los Angeles Rams, fourteen point two five points. He had eleven point four five in week one. Week two, he had three solos, two assists, one sack, and two QB hits. Byron Young, good young, gosh. Young man. Yeah. He's playing. Looking good. His uh, tackle over-under was one of the weirder ones on the week. Mm-hmm. It was a six. Mm-hmm. They ended up pulling it after all of us were hammering the lower, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're it not. Wasn't there to, it wasn't there to bet on today. <laughs> they're not used to us degens, like just oh, pounding yeah. these uh, tackle props. There's some guys sitting in a little meeting somewhere saying, all right. Guys, we're getting like uh, way too much action on the, the Byron other. Young <laughs> under for his tackle prop. Where are these freaks coming from? No, but legitimately, Byron Young looks great. I mean, um, it's also maybe a little bit of the Aaron Donald, um, you yeah. know, elevation that's kind of helping Byron Young out. But, hey, he's, he's going to get to play alongside of him all year. And he's good in his own right. I mean, he's yep. athletic. I mean, he's got upside. He was productive at Tennessee. I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't mind him. He's he's out there. He's playing a ton that's already, right. you know. That's that's what you're looking for. Yep. I love so, it. Let me finish the rest yes, of this, Yes, please go, Bobo. So, Jordan Fuller, safety, um, kind of somebody that we've always – um, wondered this season, is he going to be relevant at all? Um, should we pay attention to him? And maybe we should. I know Jordan uh, Fuller's a really good player, but for IDP, 10.75 points in week two, three solos, four assists. 
My boy Ernest Jones, 9.25 points in week two. He had five solos and five assists. So 10 tackles, but, you know, nothing really in the big play category. It's kind of aggravating. Kobe Durant, eight points, two solos, two assists, one PD. Maybe keep an eye on Kobe Durant. He got burnt a little bit in this game. So I don't know how relevant Kobe's going to be for very long. And then our favorite edge uh, name to pronounce in uh, all of IDP right now, Michael Height. Michael Height. Edge for the Rams, 6.5 points, four solos, two assists. There you go. So uh, Kind of like we talked about all season. Um, even though Aaron Donald did nothing today, I think he had one QB hit outside of Aaron Donald, Ernest Jones, and now Byron Young. Still just nothing worth rostering. Just some, like, uh, depending on your league size mm -hmm. options, right, for the Rams. So yep. let's move on to Giants Cardinals and talk about, uh, I don't know if you were talking about this before we started recording, uh, Bobo, but Jason Panak, yep. uh, safety there, 23.75 points, leading scorer for the Giants, 10 solos, 3 assists, 3 TFLs. Go off, Jason Panak. Adoree Jackson, 13.75 points, 4 solos, 1 assist, and a PD. It was a DB fest for the Giants because Xavier McKinney is up next, 12.25 points, 11.5 week 1. So a really solid start to the year for Xavier McKinney. Yep. 6 solos, 1 assist, and a PD. Dexter Lawrence, the defensive tackle, 11.5 points, three solos, one assist, a TFL, two QB hits. And then Bobby O'Karake clocks in at number five, 11 and a half points, 9.75 points week one, five solos, three assists, and a TFL. Bit of a slow start for Bobby O'Karake, uh, but I do love seeing Addy. These uh, DB options in New York have uh, been playing pretty well to start the season. Yeah, and the usage for both of them is pretty solid. For Pinnock, um, he had... Two snaps on the defensive line, 18 in the box, 29 at free safety, six in the slot. Xavier McKinney had three on the line, 20 in the box, 31 at free safety, and four in the slot. So both of them getting, you know, snaps closer to the line of scrimmage. Um, Panak obviously did a lot more with, with those today. Um, we'll see what the alignment data looks like in, in week two. We don't have that yet. But, yeah, I mean, both those guys I think are, are great options for you every week. Yep. Now, Aziz Ojolari, I think, was out this game. Uh, I think he was doubtful. I didn't actually see if he played or not. What about Simmons? What did he do? Um, he didn't play a lot, I don't believe. He had two tackles. Um, let me yeah. help you out here. Yeah, two tackles. That's it. Hmm. I don't really know how many snaps he played, which that was what I was going to ask you all is, how much longer do we continue thinking about Okereke and Micah McFadden? I know McFadden had a big week one, but he had five tackles this week against Arizona. Yeah, I mean, I'm as far as like I haven't been interested in starting McFadden anywhere. I don't yeah, have him I haven't anywhere. Either. Um, yes. but yeah, I mean, I'm only really wanting the LB one there. I want Bobby O, and that's yeah. it. Yeah, and Bobby O is a fine like LB two three option. It I'm is, not like thrilled if he's my LB one. Simmons has only been there for like three weeks. I know that was like a really late um, trade this off season. So, and it does make you a little. I mean, I. I does it affect the safeties at all at any point? You know, Simmons. Like, is, are they going to try and trot him out there, or is he going to is he going to affect that second linebacker? It's who knows. Who knows how that's going to a little go bit of a at, wild card as the year shakes out. So it, there's a little bit of risk in there with a lot of those guys like that. I think the Giants kind of need to figure out how to maybe use a guy like that. The, Gi the Giants are struggling a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Kayvon struggling to get in the back. I was going to say he's got five and a half points through two weeks. Yeah, yeah. it's not good. I ended up cooling on him as we got closer to the season, mm -hmm. just because I don't know, just something about it. Did it feel right? The just vibes, feel right. vibes were off. When, ever since he got that, uh, like. Pancaked at um, oh yeah in practice it was who was it it was the really good left tackle there and and the, the for the Giants oh yeah Andrew Thomas mm -hmm. yeah 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 it was a really bad look for him and ever since then I was like yeah no no zero mm. sacks for the New York Giants today across the board I'm not worried about Kayvon um not He'll worried about fine. not worried about Aziz it's just like be patient on these guys if there's a big takeaway from week two it's like don't panic on these you know very talented edge yeah. rushers and you know the week one with the giants you can just throw that out the window it's like it was such a weird and, yep. and bad week burn for them. the burn the tape kind of they just game. got off to a really bad start but yep they'll be fine they gave up a lot of points pretty fast today didn't they and then yeah skipped the whole game yeah, yeah. trying to catch up they came back and won it came back like down 21 mm -hmm. yep yep so let's talk about the cardinals though because we got to get to the guy with the juice, uh, he was in at number three. Above him were a couple of guys that we've talked about a little bit here. Jalen Thompson, 24.25 points, five solos, two assists, a TFL. No Buda Baker. Yeah, no Buda Baker, we should mention. One INT. Kaiser White, uh, 
very solid start to the season. Another great value at linebacker, 21.05 points, uh, 12.25 points. Week one, five solos, two assists, one sack, a TFL, and a QB hit. And then the long-haired beauty clocking in at number three, 18.1 points for Dennis Gardeck, edge rusher for the Arizona Cardinals after 30.7 points week one, four solos, one sack, two TFLs, one QB hit. Addy, I know we joked about it, but is Dennis Gardeck in consideration at this point for IDP lineups? I think so. I mean... It's uh, it's hard to look away from about 49 points to start the season between the first two weeks. Yeah, I mean, he's like a top six edge at the moment, right? Yes, that uh, will not probably hold, but... Uh, but who knows, you know? That team's I mean, bad. That's a bad team. Yep. He clearly is the only one on it with juice. Yep. Um, And yeah, I mean, he's done this before. I mean, it was, I think it was a couple seasons ago, but like the guy got like... I want to say like a hundred, a <laughs> hundred pass rush snaps or, or maybe a hundred total snaps and ended up putting up like eight sacks. So, I mean, this, it's in, this is in his range. Yeah. Like the story tracks in week one, he had 28 total snaps and had two sacks to go with uh, three pressures. So Highly efficient guy. 91.2 PFF grade in week one. I don't know what his week two numbers are going to look like, but. Hey, if you continue giving this guy opportunity, it sounds like he and you, can. You can't ignore this no, if you're the no. Cardinals. You're like, okay, this guy is clearly this dude's making plays. Pretty good. Let's get him out on the field. He's also electric. You know, he affects yeah. a little bit of what's going on there in the stadium. Changes the energy a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely, momentum. Um, builder. Hard worker. I mean, clearly, clearly has the respect of of his teammates and stuff. Yeah, yeah. that stuff plays very well. And let's not act like there's anybody in front of him, no. like a Clellan <laughs> Farrell, like an early draft pick that they're like, no, nah, we got to give this guy no. some more time. His real competition is a guy that they just converted to edge yep. and yeah. Zayvon Collins, <laughs> yeah. who's still trying to figure out himself. You and know, Gardeck is running circles around. Mm -hmm. Zayvon thus far. Let me tell you what this season was. Though. Let me pull this up. So, yeah, it was. Um, all right. So, in 20, in 2020, he had seven sacks on, on 94 defensive wow. snaps. So not even 100 snaps. Like James Houston. 94 defensive snaps. Wow. Seven sacks. Yeah. That's incredible. So, I mean, that's like James Houston, right? Sorry. Yeah. Who did I call him? I don't know. Justin oh. Houston, maybe? <laughs> Maybe. Anyways. Yeah, maybe you said James Houston. I don't know. I think you said Very James. Very similar vein. I'm going to give yeah. you the benefit of the doubt yeah, I here. I think you're wrong, but I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. I love you, Josh. Yeah. We should uh, just round things out. Chris Barnes, linebacker, 15 and a quarter points. And then yep. Kytrell Clark. Mm -hmm. Y'all guys, you, you heard Nailed of this it. guy? Uh, DB, 14 and a quarter points, two so or five solos and two PDs. I did message Macri. Devin Lloyd played a or ninety nine percent of snaps this week, boys. Let's nice. go, Devin. So it's a very nice snapshot. That's back to back. You yep. know, and the other thing too is they they were frustrating for the Chiefs today. That uh, that Jags defense was pretty good. Um, I don't really know what they got in the backfield for a whole lot of sacks, but they kept uh, kept the Chiefs from putting a whole lot of points up. Yep. What Chiefs did not do? look great through two weeks, but um, yeah, I thought that would be a, a different game. I thought that'd be a high scoring one, but mm -hmm. no, it was a grinded out yeah, defensive knife fest. fight. Lawrence came back to earth. Yeah, he uh, he does that though. He has those games where he's just you know like what's what's wrong with this guy. Also, speaking about quarterbacks, have you seen the uh, pace that your boy Kirk Cousins is on? Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, the O of seventeen <laughs> pace or whatever. <laughs> they headed to the Jets pace. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, y'all have traded a bunch of pieces away. That that defense is just the gonna give up bad. a lot of points. The yeah. offense is gonna be fun. It's a it's fun it's fun hey, football for Kirk's, fantasy. And Kirk's stuff. gonna continue doing this, man. Yeah. Is it too late to buy Jordan Addison? I tried to in a yeah, couple leagues nope. this week. Not even in Dynasty. Like, in redraft, I went to try to get Jordan Addison. Yeah. Now, I mean, unless it's some just fish. I mean, but, yeah, I, 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 you ain't getting him, I wouldn't think. K.J. Osborne had a couple bad drops to where it was like, yeah. all right. That's another – That's one of those situations. About like, this is annoying. Like, yeah. Just put him as the wide receiver, too. Yeah. Because like, there was a – that happened in that game. Like, there was those sets where like, he was left off the field because mm -hmm. he's the wide receiver, too. He's like, get him on the field. Yeah. Get K.J. Osborne <laughs> off. What are we doing? K.J., buddy. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Let's move on to the Jets versus Cowboys. We mentioned maybe the Jets are the worst team in the NFL now. Uh, but the IDPs, I mean, we had a pretty solid day. C.J. Mosley, 18.25 points, five solos, four assists, one TFL, one PD, one QB hit. Sauce Gardner, 14.5 points, four solos, two assists, and a PD. Jordan Whitehead uh, coming off the three-interception game against Josh Allen. Still had a really solid performance, 13.25 points, seven solos, two assists, and a TFL. Jordan Whitehead had three interceptions last week? Yeah. Yes. 
He had three <laughs> interceptions <laughs> against Josh and Allen. And that was – he's never had three interceptions in a season before. Yes. He oh, had an incentive wow. in his contract for three interceptions, and he hit it in week one. Oh, nice. What was the I think, money on I think it was 250. Woo! Yeah, I think it was 250 Damn. he got. Woo! A little nice little bonus there. Uh, Solomon Thomas, uh, 13.2. And then uh, Quentin Williams. <laughs> nah. So we mentioned Jeffrey Simmons, but Quentin Williams cracked the top five for the Jets. 13 points after 12.75. About time. Week one, five solos, one assist, two TFLs. So, Bust. Yeah, decent game. <laughs> decent game for Quentin Williams. Uh, let's just talk about the Cowboys, boys, because I, I cannot look away from this box score for Micah Parsons. Mm. Edge rusher for the Dallas Cowboys, 44.2 points, uh, 16.25 last week. I think Jace had him as the number one IDP in his rankings this week, so make sure you're following along the idpshow.com. Jace is putting out some awesome rankings, and uh, Michael Parsons came through. He single-handedly destroyed mm -hmm. this yeah. Jets team. Did you see the stunt sack he had uh, where he kind of stunted and then ended up coming up through the interior? Yes, that was sick. He ran so fast yes. through the interior. It he was destroyed Zach Wilson. Unbelievable. Oh, just wrecked him. Yeah. Uh, that was one of the uh, scarier defensive plays that I've actually seen in a while. That Dallas defense is filthy. What was now, they've played some bad offenses in the Giants and the Jets. But yeah, right. That team is that That's team's got team. the eye of the tiger, man. That may Very be the good. NFC favorite right now. And they don't even have Donovan Wilson out there right now. Yep. You know, another little missile type safety that can rush the quarterback. So in case you haven't looked or didn't know, you can actually go to the idpshow.com and look at Adam's ranks where he has Micah Parsons as not only the edge overall, but the overall IDP yep. number one. We're seeing it this season, boys. I wanted to look and see what Parsons forty time was. He ran a four four one forty. That's outrageous. And that showed. It would yeah. be fun to see like what that like uh That's probably one of the fastest defensive players in the league, I would say. Oh, I mean that's he's one of the best athletes in the league. Can I mean. you put the ten yard splits in here next time too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's like, Of course. Sure. Appreciate it. Sure. I'd be happy to. That was the type of play to where you could tell like that ten yard split was pretty stupid right there. He got to Zach Wilson so fast, but Micah Parsons, goodness gracious. Is so, this like a TJ Watt type trajectory? Or better. This is a deep boy type trajectory for me. I don't mean like that. I just mean like career wise. Oh yeah, I mean he's uh, he's he should be elite for a decade. Yeah, I he's mean. on track to be this generation. So we talk about JJ Watt and uh, Aaron Donald, right? Like first ballot Hall of Fame defensive players. When will he get paid? Uh, probably next off season, maybe. Boy, it and what is he gonna get paid? Golly, is that gonna be like a? Four year, hundred and twenty million dollar deal. Bosa's deal was outrageous. I what was it, it? Like one fifty? One sixty. I think he clocked in like around twenty five a year. Am I making that up? It was it was crazy. It was a lot of money. I was like, damn. Yeah. It was think, a five year, hundred and seventy million dollar deal. Sheesh. Sheesh. So what does that average out to? That's a lot. Thirty four million per year? No. Nope. Wow. That's not right. Anyways. No, I think that is about right. That is right. 34. Right. Okay, then I think I think Mike is going to want 35 yeah. plus. God. And I think he'll get it. Well, and that'll be in a few more years too and that cap's, cap's going to be cap's going to be up. Jerry Jones is like he loves loves paying his own guys. So Micah Parsons is going to sign a humongous contract, boys. Yeah, Micah Parsons ain't leaving Dallas. No. He is never leaving Dallas. You mentioned that Donovan Wilson was out, but Trayvon Diggs, Malik Cooker, J. Ron Curse picked up the slack getting in with interceptions. So it was just a Interception fest mm. against Zach Wilson. Jaron Curse, we needed five tackles, bro. Yeah, he gave you uh, two. Mm. But Trayvon Diggs had a pick. Uh, he had 16.05 points, 16 points from Malik Hooker, who had two picks. And then Jaron Curse had a pick, 15.7 points. Osei Odigizua shows up again on the podium, 13.2 points after 27.1 week mm -hmm. one. Two solos, one sack, a TFL, and a QB hit. So uh, Dallas defense. Just fire them all up. I mean, this is the best defense in the NFL. Minus LV. LV yeah, we, the linebackers we have been kind of mid. Best defense in the NFL. You think so? I do. Absolutely do. Hmm. I don't know. That's tough. Who I mean, would, there, you, who would you put up there with them? Eagles. I'm Eagles. I mean, Niners. Same pretty Rams. damn good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rams. <laughs> they're up there. They're up the there. Rams. Not the Rams. But I mean, they're, that shit it, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, you know how <laughs> it like goes. Yeah. Swat. Swat the Kimbe Matumbo style. <laughs> Any given week, one of those teams can look like the best defense, yep. you know? It's hard to look away from that Jalen Carter addition to the interior for yeah. the Eagles. That's some dumb stuff right there. Well, it's, I want to see the Cowboys go up against a real offense, but. 
That's so true. Far. They've had the easiest schedule so, so far. So far. I mean, them. but sh- I mean, shutting the Giants, I mean, came back. They showed some life, and they, they just smothered them yeah. uh, week one. So Wow, Damone Clark, one assisted tackle on the week. Um, I mean, no, thank you on the linebacker. I would like to look at that snap, uh, that snap breakdown too. Is it just LVE? Is that the only linebacker they're no, really running out there? Last, uh, I think last week it was around like fifty. They were same snaps. I think similar snaps. I think it was like fifty to sixty for Damone Clark and like sixty to seventy for LVE, something yeah. like that. But again, Zach Wilson, twelve completions and then sixteen rushes for sixty-four yards. So very. You know, minimal offense in that right. game. Yeah. yeah, one of those very, teams. Very bad just, team. The one of that play was Garrett Wilson's 80-yard touchdown yep. or whatever that was. So, gross game other than that. Let's talk about the uh, Commanders versus Broncos, and then we'll wrap up with uh, – we can actually talk Sunday Night Football now, too, because that game just wrapped. Is Parsons' value going up? Oh, absolutely. In IDP. Yeah, I mean, it was already really high. What's the peak? What what What's the – Is he worth two first? Probably. But would you pay that? I probably wouldn't. Probably not. It's IDPs. I it's just it, you're not going to get if that you type knew of production. You're going to get this type of production for the next. But you're not. That's the thing. Is eight years. You look back and you could have had Miles Garrett for the last five or six years. Over the course of a season, you're going to feel good. But week to week, I mean, it's going to be frustrating still. Yeah, I don't know. And again, keep in mind a lot of the a lot of the trades that you got sent in. It depends on the situation. A lot of the stuff that you got sent in for the trade page, you know, some of these are sixteen team leagues, some of these are twelve team leagues. I mean, that's that's very, you know It it, it matters. It for does. Sure. You got two, you know, first that are back back into that I think most leagues are probably twelve teams. I probably, so in your twelve team leagues, like I don't feel comfortable sending two first for any type of defensive player. Although if you're gonna do it, I mean it is it, like Michael that's Parsons, what he's worth. Michael I think Parsons, that's yeah, the sticker price. Right, I don't want to sell for any less than two yep. first. So really, I understand. Man, that's tough. That's tough. I get it. I have tried to get Michael Parsons in a in a few leagues, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, no one usually is. It would. I usually don't bring enough to the table. It'd be fun if you've just got a squad. If you've got a squad and you've got a bunch of picks. Yes, yeah, context. Yep. Let me let me let me. Uh, if you got like Nick Bosa already or someone like elite, like I think that's the way to do it. Like if you're adding them to like a just an absurd mm-hmm. defense already, yeah. Like Stacking that. a strength on a strength. Yeah. I have a team where I have Mahomes, Jefferson, Chase, Gibbs, Brian Robinson, Kittle, T. Higgins, Devonta Smith, Keenan Allen. The fact you know this roster off the top of your head. Yeah, is in a situation like that. McLaurin. Yeah, in a situation like that, who cares about those first? Because those are gonna be late first. That's anyway. kind of my thought. Is like, why not go ahead and just send a, send a burn offer. these yep. picks? Send a, yeah, in that situation, if you're loaded up and yeah, and you and you have a bunch of picks like that, mm. yeah, I don't care. Mm. Go get you a Michael Parsons for some late first mm. that people will convince. You know, because a lot of people want to convince themselves like that's it. You can't predict these these uh, picks. You don't know where. Th- yeah, you kind of can. I yeah. can kind of tell <laughs> your team, team. to suck ass. Yeah. Like I, I can tell. <laughs> That team, yes, you can. Yeah, not going to be a top three overall pick. Like, what do you mean you can't tell? Sure, you can tell. Oh, and you two. dope, <laughs> you fish. If I didn't have so many points against me, I know. Well, Bunch you of still excuses. need points yeah. for. Bunch of just hey. losers in fantasy. Really, <laughs> talking is. about losers. Um, no, this is actually this actually ended up being a good game. Commanders Broncos. Who would have thought? Uh, Deron Payne was the number one score for the Commanders. Good to see you back, Deron Payne. 28.15 points after 11 and a half in week one. He had a sack. He had two TFLs, a PD, three QB hits, and five solos. Nice. Bobo, your boy. Montez Sweat is wow. maybe the edge one through the start of the season. I think it's still TJ Watt. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, we'll see what he, he does tomorrow right. night. But Or Hunter, the no Hunter. Uh, three sacks through two weeks, though, for Montez. 51, 52 points for yeah. Montez Sweat through two weeks is pretty nice. Uh, so unless uh, J- I think even if TJ puts up a zero tomorrow, I think he's still got him. But yeah. he's in the top five, at least Montez Sweat is after a 21.7 point performance, following up his 30.05 points in week one, two solos, two assists, uh, one and a half sacks, a TFL, three QB hits. This was a big story, boys. Chase Young is back. We thought maybe he'd be back week three or later. He was back this week. He had two solos and assists. A sack and a half, a TFL, two QB hits, and 18.55 points. Uh, Emmanuel Forbes, cornerback rookie, 18.05 points after 10.75 week one. So a nice little option there in CB like required leagues. Like Forbes. 
you, uh, Cody Barton rounded out the top five, 17 points, four solos, six assists, two QB hits, mm -hmm. and one fumble recovery. So much like his brother in Las Vegas, Cody Barton, Big Bob Spillane, some great values at linebacker. Um, but this was a very profitable game for IDP boys. <laughs> Ain't no more farting. Cody be starting. Cody be starting. <laughs> Jamin Davis was right off the podium as well. I think he was 15 or 16 points. But only three tackles and one sack. Uh, a sack is what got Jamin a lot of his points. Um, Chase Young physically looked pretty good, but you could tell he hadn't played a whole lot of football here lately. Yeah, he what was, was kind of I wonder what his snaps were. He was, uh, you know, I think he jumped a gun maybe twice a little bit, got called off sides. Um, had a nice little sack to end the game um, close in the fourth quarter with uh, Montez Sweat. I don't know how they – Maybe that was both where they got their half sack from, but um, it yeah. was, it was. Is it? Yeah, I saw that play. Like Montez Sweat was clearly very happy for Chase Young. Yeah, it was also Montez Sweat's sack, but Chase Young. Was yeah, there yeah, also. Montez was there first. I noticed that yeah. she's like, no, Montez was there first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> didn't give Montez credit for that. Yeah, um, bump him up to two and a half. But I don't like that. I was like, oh, Montez, Montez was there first, but he was still building up Chase. Yeah. That's very nice. We build the guys. That's confident. right. That's a good teammate. Good for Very good teammate. On the Broncos side, it was a bunch of like these are all highly drafted edge rushers. For the commanders, but on the Broncos side, it was Jonathan Cooper, 28.5, Randy Gregory, 22.75, Nick Benito, 18.3, sure. and then rounding out a couple guys we've actually heard of, Josie Jewell, 14 and a quarter, and Justin Simmons with 11 points. So, um, any interest in any of these Broncos edge rushers, Eddie? No, it's, it's going to be like that, I think, every week. I mean, Randy Gregory is someone that we've seen it before you know from before and um kind of know what to expect i think we can kind of probably predict his snap share on a on a weekly basis but the rest of those guys jonathan cooper uh who knows uh, nick benito he's still this is his second year who knows i mean also you're going to be bringing in baron browning at some point maybe drew sanders gets some some edge snaps and get some playing time at some point so i mean no i'm i'm avoiding most of these broncos pass rushers yeah, but uh, Josie Jewell, he had a little bit of a down week, week one, so 14.25 points on nine total tackles and a PD. was good to have him back north of 10 points. Singleton had a bad game. Yep. Surprising. Yeah, usually Kingleton's eaten. Yep. I don't know what the snaps broke down. Uh, broke I think down he was one. out there a lot. I, I, I mean, every bit of that game I saw, he was out there. There you Just, go. Uh, I think it's he only had game. Like three tackles. It think. happens. So, so Be um, better. Yeah. So just a, a good game, though, from the Commanders. I mean, this is what you like to see. A lot of these uh, defensive linemen doing really well. Let's turn the clock back, though, and talk about Thursday night football. And we got to talk about the guy who I think clocks in at number three. Uh, we haven't looked at Sunday night football yet, but I don't know that anyone's going to be threatening to Neil Hunter on the uh, bronze medal for total points for week two. He scored 40.6 points eight total tackles, and three sacks against the Philadelphia Eagles. He was the leading point scorer for that entire game, followed by Josh Sweat, 23.35 points, a tackle, a sack, and a forced fumble. And then also uh, you had, uh, this was Justin Evans, 18.75 points, uh, DB for the Eagles. And then uh, this is Harrison Phillips, the defensive lineman for the Vikings, was fourth, 17.8 points. And then Bye Bye Bynum was clocking in at number four, 17.25 points, DB for the Vikings. And then Jordan Hicks was uh, fifth at 15.25, Addy. Y'all seen what uh, Cam Bynum's done the last two weeks? He's been pretty damn good. Mm hmm. 10 tackles week one, 15 tackles week two. What's going on there? Shoot is this guy wait. getting the alignment? Did you check? Do we know his let's, alignment let's, for let's week check one? Let's this out. Definitely not. And we'll have it for week two. Let's go. Yeah, so that's right because uh, he's a Thursday night game. Because, I mean, this is, um, you know, 27.25 points to the first two weeks. So I'd have to look and see where he ranks among the safeties right now. But I'd imagine he's probably top 10. Um, I mean, oh, the yeah. sleeper headline via Rotowire is tackling machine early in 2023. Cam Bynum is. Yeah, so, I mean, the alignment isn't really what you'd expect. That's not bad, though. Seven on the uh, defensive line, 22 in the box, 30 at slot, 81 at free safety. Mm. So, I mean, he's playing he's playing deep more than he, than he isn't. Um, and then Harrison Smith, his usage, he has 14 on the line, 45 in the box, 48 at free safety, and 33 in the slot. So, the usage is much better for him, but... Sometimes it don't matter, folks. Yep. 
Play, playmakers make plays. That's what they do. Playmakers, uh, Ivan Pace was at 13.05 points after 11 points week one. He played 46 snaps in week one and 61 in week two. He had eight tackles both weeks, but he had half a sack uh, this week. So, I mean, this is the LB1 in Minnesota. What a rise for Ivan Pace. Love to see it. It is a bad defense, though. So, I mean, it does give you – it does concern you a little bit. You hope that it sticks around and stays. But uh, the bad defense, they got ran all over. So, you never know. What's Brian Flores going to do? Yeah. Gosh. Uh, week one, Ivan Pace, 75 overall PFF grade. Week two, 86.3. He's a good player. Pass rush grade both weeks of 90. Tackle – Grade of 80 and then 82. Wow, man. So the PFF numbers are uh, pretty good. They're looking good. Just like they were in college. Yep. Um, Asamoah got a little bit more snaps. I think he played 18% of the snaps. Jordan Hicks had a nice week. Mm -hmm. Like we expect, we expect him to bounce back because he was he sucked it up week one mm -hmm. uh, tackle-wise. But I think he was over 10 this week. So Yeah, I had nice him in a five-leg uh Parlay on week underdog one. in week two, the oh. Thursday night game. I was like, let me go Thursday night action here, and I went under because I was like, oh god, yeah, and it just, yeah, it mm -hmm. didn't, it didn't work out. Wrong way, did not work out. So, I hate going under. Yeah, I it always, sucks. I just I love hate going it. over. Mm -hmm. I like, I gotta Fire. sprinkle in some under. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go over and root for guys. That's to get all tackles, I do. Yeah, you know, you like the good juju, not the bad juju. Because the lower stuff is just the worst feeling. <laughs> She's like, no, please yeah. don't be in on the play. Yeah. Just, you feel like a loser. Yeah, you're like, no, no, go. miss the tackle, miss the tackle. <laughs> yeah, that's no fun. We don't want to do that. Well, let's uh, quickly, boys, wrap up, though, with Sunday night football. The Dolphins just got the dub you over the Patriots. Funny. I did. Sunday night football. Sunday night football. <laughs> and we're going to talk about, yeah, Dolphins, Patriots. Let's get them pulled up here. We'll just kind of riff on who we like from this game. Who performed well? I've got some interesting info from Macri. So once you go through okay. the stats, we'll talk about the so, Miami IDP flex. Uh, look who it is leading the charge. AVG, oh mm -hmm. Andrew Van Ginkle, twenty five point seven five points. He had seven tackles and a sack. Uh, nice to see the guy here at number two, Bradley Chubb, twenty five point five five points, uh, is second place here, and then. He is back from the dead, folks. David Long, 21.4 points, seven tackles, mm. and a sack. So welcome back, David Long. No one started him. Yeah. No, he of only course. got, what, like 17 snaps week yep. one? Mm -hmm. But, you know, did he get a role because ABG was playing edge this week? I think that's probably it. ABG yep. played 95% of his snaps on the edge there this week. Because Fangio said that Van Ginkle beat David Long out for the job. That came out this week because people were surprised. Jerome Baker, 100% of snaps. David Long played 84%. There you go. So, yeah, still hard to trust, though, David Long, mm -hmm. though, just because we know what happened with When Jalen is Phillips. back, yeah, I'm, I'm really worried that um, we may see David Long back to the bench. Now, it was nice to see David Long get a sack and produce immediately tonight. That playmaker. Was, that was nice. I yeah. don't know why this guy got beat out by AVG, but... I'm not a defensive coordinator. Long either. hair. Yeah, long hair don't care. Hey, there's Matthew Judon again, 16.55 last week. This week, 20.5 points. So Matthew Judon doing what he does here to start the season. Javon Holland was also really good, 18.25 points, 11 total tackles. Let's My go. man has been a tackling machine, Bobo. 36% in the box. There we go. 25 tackles to the first two weeks for Javon Holland. And then Christian Wilkins, also a very solid week, 18.15 Point six tackles, one sack after a 2.75 point performance in week one. So good to see Christian Wilkins bounce back as well, boys. So there you go. Yeah, I put out a decent little uh, Javon Holland tweet last week. Let me find it. I love how he's, he mm -hmm. called it a decent little. It was not, not great. He, he was, you know, being. Okay. It didn't get humbled. the likes that I really wanted or the impressions or the profile visits. But, right, I mean, <laughs> that's every, what matters. <laughs> every night he goes to sleep looking at his Twitter analytics. I love looking at those yeah. analytics. It's, it's the only ones I care about. That's right. It's true. So please like his tweets, even if they're decent. All right, hold on. let me find this. Keep going, guys. I'm trying to vamp for you. You want some more sounds? We you got guys some. Are good vamped guys. out. Vamped yes. out. <laughs> y'all are good guys. I want y'all to know that while <laughs> we have I've, a second. I've vamped for as long as and I possibly listeners, can. Listeners, I want you guys to know that. We respect you. Stop and we pointing <laughs> and scroll your Twitter account. What are you doing? 
Can't find it. All right. This, the sweet spot, though, was like 60% for Javon Hall in week one. His career sweet spot usage was, and when we say sweet spot, that means snaps that the players are getting on the defensive line, in the box, or in the slot. Uh, that usage is way up um, this year as yes. opposed to last year. Yep. So it was like 60% week one, but previously like his career usage was like 30% in the sweet spot. Per a tremendous presence in this space. Yes. Week one usage, 80% uh, of the 80 snaps, 22 in the box, 18 in the slot, 40 free safety, and then zero on the DL. Uh, career usage, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here, but – yeah, you're exactly right. What was this, what were the breakdown to the sweet spot percentage? Fifty uh, percent in the box slot slash DL. That was week one, right? Yep. And then what was uh, career? Twenty eight percent. There you go. Wow. So up twenty two percent, and then yeah, eleven tackles this week. I mean, kind of feels like the same. Although we do have to remember, Brandon Jones may be coming back at some mm-hmm. point, and so that could throw a monkey wrench and all this stuff, but I, but, but who cares? I mean, Javon Holland is one of these like yep. Antoine Winfield type. Yep. I don't, I'm comfortable with like him being a locked in starter. I who think cares he's a, I think he's he a plays, stud. I think he's a stud. I've yep. got them both and I've started them both. Yeah. It's like, it's that, that is the two guys that buck the trend as far as the usage does matter for safeties, but for some guys, the outliers, it doesn't matter. Yeah. As much. There's a, there's, and there's more than you think. I mean, Minka yep. Fitzpatrick also Mink is another one as well. Yep. So, uh, all right, boys, let's play the game again. We've got two games tomorrow night. We've got, um, what was it, uh, Panthers and Saints is up first, I believe. Sure. And then Browns, Steelers. Mm-hmm. So give me the leading score for, let's start with the first game, Panthers, Saints. Who are you guys going with leading score from the first game? Ooh, I got a good one. Let's go Carl Granderson. That's a, like that's a that. fun one. I had to plug in Carl Granderson for Rookie Aziz QB. Ojolari in our main league. Hmm. I mean, the obvious ones are like Brian Burns, Frankie sure. Louvu. Yeah, I'm going to go with Frankie, I think. I'm going to go Frankie. I'll go with uh, I'll go with Cam Jordan. Cam Jordan? Cam Jordan against okay. the rookie. I He's like going to like that. I like You're going Louvu? I'm going Louvu. All right. Y'all want to see if there's any um, props? Yeah. Oh, yes. That'd be fun. And let's go game two. Let's go game two. It is the Browns versus the Steelers. Oh. So that's fun because you got two heavyweights there on the defensive line for both of these teams with TJ Watt and Miles Garrett. So, um, damn boys, lots of props. Lots of props. All right. So, Pete Warner, seven and a half tackles plus assist. I mean, the under. Under. Demario Davis is also at seven and a half. Man. Under. Under. Yeah. I He's, think I might go Pete over. I'd go, I think under. I'd go Pete over as well. Uh, Honey Badger, five and a half. Under. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, that's like right at it. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore, three and a half. I don't really like messing with the yeah, corner. I don't, I don't really don't, and I don't think I'm going to mess with the safeties much either. Yeah, anymore. The linebackers are where I want to. Linebackers feast. really yeah, seven it. and a half is a lot. It's a lot. It's a good. It's a it's a good number. You got to get eight. You got to get eight. That's a lot. You know, that's that's yeah. that's tough. That's a great game. Uh, Marcus May is at six. It's kind of high for a safety. Yeah. yeah. Grant Delpit's at five. I kind of like over. that. I like the over. I like that a lot. Yep. That's a good one. JOK is at six tackles. Mm, take the under. I think take the under. <laughs> I just don't like these linebackers, man. Yeah. Jeremy Chin's at six tackles. Under. Yep. Shaq Thompson, six and a half. Over. Frankie Lou is six and a half. Over. over. Cole Holcomb, seven. Mm. Not so staying away from that one. I think go I, under. Yeah, maybe so. Uh, and then Mink is at six tackles. Over. Probably go over on that one. Yeah. So that's Any fun. sacks? Let's see. Yes, yes, yes. Let's look at these up. Okay, let's talk, though, biggest point output here. No I'm sacks. going with uh, no. no sacks. Mm. Let's, I'm going to go with Zadaria Smith. Okay, I like that. Yeah, Shout out one. to our front office front office boys. Uh, they had one. the uh, YouTube short. The uh, pro tip of the week was to start Zadaria Smith against the Steelers offensive line. So I'm going to back him up and go Z Smith for my leading scorer. This game is where at Pittsburgh. Okay, give me Cam Hayward. Cam Hayward. He's on IR. He's on IR, Bye-bye. Oh. We didn't mention that. That is oh, important uh, to note. That's right. Um, yeah. IR. Uh, not sounding good have. for. It sounds like six to eight weeks, too. Yeah. Not good. groin. I think he had surgery. I forgot about that. Who do yeah. you have here? Top score. Let's take TJ and Miles off the table. Give me yeah. Highsmith. I'll Highsmith. Highsmith. Okay. What do you got, Bobo? One of those mm-hmm. linebackers? Give me Del Pitt. Del Pitt. I like Del Pitt. Okay. Old Pickett hadn't looked good. And I love that over, f- over five tackles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hammer that one. That'll be one that I put in tomorrow for sure. Shout out Macri for that Dale Pitt love. All right. Yeah, he's been great. Shout out Macri for everything. Yeah. Macri's a great, out. great guy, great person. 
I uh, love him. I think he's live probably right now doing the uh, doing the show with uh, Nathan. I think yeah. they do the the recap on Sunday nights. He asked me to join. When are you When are you uh, going on the pod with Mac? I think Green? I'm uh, not this. I think I'm previewing week four, maybe. Okay. So I'm in a, I'm in a couple weeks. It was a great time. Yep. Yeah, really those episodes it. have done really well on their YouTube too. So I'm gonna fly up, do it live, yes, do it live, do it live, <laughs> do it live from the basement. He's like, "Oh my god, now I gotta get my camera rearranged." Just stress him out. Uh, but yeah, make sure you're checking out John's channel. A lot of us that Man, you listen to and have heard on this show, now they're not, <laughs> have uh, are going to be on that program. He is doing a weekly IDP episode in the PFF Fantasy Podcast feed. So let's show some support for that episode because it was really cool of PFF to give them uh, to give John a weekly uh, IDP preview episode with some of our buddies from IDP. Uh, we'll have the weekly preview with Jake and Evan coming back at you Wednesday night. Um, and uh, Jace is doing a weekly guest to talk about rankings. That episode slayed over on YouTube. You guys have really been Don't liking that, Josh. Uh, the episodes with Jace. <laughs> Uh, yes, Queen. And uh, so make sure you're checking that out. He had Mike Wollert on this past week. Um, so, yeah, we've got tons of content. You know what it is. You know where to find us. The IDP show.com. If you like the show, rate and review over on Apple. Five stars and a written review and five stars on Spotify is a really easy way to support the show. And we appreciate y'all. And uh, yeah, boys, we'll be back for the week three recap. Addy, I think we have a trade show. Coming up here sometime soon with uh, the Younger King. Yes. Send us your trades. We'll be making a post from the IDP show um, Substack probably this week. That's right. We'll so, uh, gather some input. I'll make some tweets out there on the uh, at IDP trades show account. So, make sure you're following. But, uh, yeah, just stay locked in. Stay listening to the show. You'll, uh, you know, continue to rack up those wins. Continue to dominate. That's what we're here for, folks. So, um, yeah, until... Next Sunday, y'all enjoy the football, enjoy the content, and we will see y'all soon. It's the IDP show, now you know.